All right, guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Good to see y'all. What's up, Lednor? As always, good to see you. Scorpy, good to see you as well. Hope you guys are doing well. Let's see what we got. I'm going to, yeah, standard stuff, man. Sip coffee, slow roll this, get started on Flatland. Probably shouldn't be too long on Flatland. But yeah, <clears throat> looks like we got a good bit to do. So that, that'll be, that'll be fun. We'll get it done. Okay, so let's jump in here. So a little news update. The, the update for Expeditions is today. The Azov Atom, the new truck that is going to come to SnowRunner is going to be here on April 2nd. So hopefully we don't finish. <laughs> hopefully we don't finish uh, season 12 by the before that, because I would like to actually play the Azov Atom on hard mode here and actually do some missions with it. Yo, Jack, thank you for stopping in, man. Long time no see. Appreciate you stopping in and say hello. Got to get to school. Where can I find the cheapest gas for hard mode? Cheapest gas? Usually, I think I think there's around $2 worth of gas or $2 per gallon, or is it $8 per gallon? $2 per liter? Um, pretty much in most places, most maps, actually. There's only a couple maps, I think, that, that don't really have it. <laughs> no, this April 2nd is going to be the, the Azov Atom release. I don't... I'm pretty sure the PTS... I was, they, they said the end of the end of March. So I'm hoping sometime this week we'll see the PTS as well. If that's the case, we'll look at it. We will jump in and take a drive around. I'm not going to do a whole bunch of things, but yeah. No, it's not the whole season. The, the, the DLC truck is a standalone. But yeah, Jack, um, pretty much most of them, you can go on Map Runner, and if you click on the gas stations, it'll give you a, uh, a reading of what they are. I can actually quickly show you before you bounce. Let's do this real quick. Okay, so for instance, this gas station right here, let's see if everybody can see this stuff. Yeah. So this gas station right here says $2 a liter, $8 a gallon. This is the cheapest you'll get pretty much in the game. Um, but yeah, just go to Map Runner and then just click on the gas stations and you'll, you'll see it. I think, I want to say like Wisconsin is is pretty expensive to, to what I've, I've come to understand. Four dollars there. Four dollars there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's expensive. I don't think there's a gas station down here. Yes, there is. Two dollars down here. So Greenwoods River has cheap, cheap gas, but this is unlocked by uh, I think some type of mission. So, but yeah, I didn't really. It didn't really matter for me because I, I didn't use. I used free fuel there. So. Anyways, hope they helped you out there, Jack. Good to see you as always. Oh my goodness, that's good. All right, guys, I'm gonna get started here, and then, uh, yeah, we'll uh, get started. I'll take a quick break, and then we'll get back to it. We're gonna roll with the BM-17, and look who's on screen, the BM-17. What about it? Let's go. Let's go. BM-17, baby. But first, I have to get the BM-17 back. Actually, you know what? I need to get some repair or, or some type of refuel vehicles out. And then I think I need to do the open up. I need to open up like the the trailer store and all that stuff because, yeah. We're going to be using all that stuff. Yeah, this is going to be interesting to get back. However, I think, I think going this way... So coming back through, actually going, I think going up is probably the best bet. Maybe trying to get back to the garage. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I need to, I think I need to get some type of fuel actually at this junction right here or some somewhere along this line, but I probably need to go do that now. 
So let's let's go do that. Why is it not letting me do it? Did I not discover the garage? Did I not discover the garage yet? Are we kidding? Wow. A new and improved. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm going to uh, discover the garage first. <laughs> totally fine. If I need both of these trailers right now, but I need to actually bring them at least some far, some way up here because I have to get over to reactive zone at some point, which is a whole ordeal. You know, I had this thought yesterday, actually, but that uh, <clears throat> maybe using the balance gearbox on the fleet star would, or the 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 load star is a good idea. Because if you think about it, it has enough power to stay in fourth gear most of the time. Does it have enough power to stay in fifth gear most of the time, and have the benefits of, I guess, having an engine that doesn't burn a lot of gas? It's kind of food for thought there. I don't know. It's hard to say. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm kinda gonna just drop these off right here in this little median here. Yeah, I like this. I'm just gonna peel out. <clears throat> Go find the garage here. I'm not really gonna need this scout much, I don't think. I think I'm going to do probably one of those contests with him, so it's okay. But I do need to get back to those trailers to go to uh, the reactive zone. Always high range? I mean, yeah. That's, that's always a good move. All right, so, oh, that's great, Nate. Looks like I'm gonna use a repair. I should find this. All right, I guess I'm just going to repair. Oh, I can't even repair this. Yikes, dude. Okay, yeah, that's right. We have to do. We have to do some things. <clears throat> What's up, man? Burst game. Welcome in. Okay, um, now for the BM, actually no, I need to get some, some trucks out. I guarantee it, I do. I gotta get something out, some type of support vehicle to get down there to the BM-17. You're good, you're currently working, okay. I'm glad you could stop in. Definitely glad you could stop in. Ooh, I always like bringing out this one. Okay, so let me actually just take a look here. <clears throat> okay, so places I'm gonna put fuel. Um, I'm definitely I definitely want to put fuel. Kind of, I don't know. I almost want to say at the metalworks or even at the farm here. What am I saving this for? Because I don't have a, uh, a resupply point. Yeah, I don't have a resupply point. Unless I go through the gateway. So. I'm just too stingy, to be honest. Let's just be, call it what it is. <clears throat> so, I don't need any fuel pretty much in this area. I don't really need fuel here. This is, this is like a, little, a simple run. I would probably need fuel... I'm thinking, oh man, I don't know. 
Maybe like at this junction. Maybe here. I don't even know if I need one at the farm because sometimes I come this way. But maybe I do. I don't know. But I need to get some fuel out or at least down to the south part right now. Yeah, I do wish you could transfer. Dumb question, but what does the PTS stand for? Public test public test server. Yeah, public test server. <clears throat> okay, so get a truck down there real quick. Actually, this is a good one. Yeah, I do wish I could transfer. Transferring repair points would be legit. I would love that, actually. Oh, dude, this thing is so slow with this fuel tanker on. I probably should have be using the doubles right now. <clears throat> yeah, I probably should be using them, but... Yeah, I'm not... How to say this, I'm not really, uh... Working on any type of performance. I mean, these still give you good lateral stability, though. These do. They're like, I think it's like a 1.186 or something like that, compared to uh, the rears having like a 1.3... I mean, honestly, I think I think there's still I think there's still good debate about do the balloon tires give you better stability than the dualies? And my my I guess my answer is I don't know. I think the uniformity of having the same the same wheel width helps, I guess. But I don't know. Maybe we're gonna have to put this to a test. Yeah, it's kind of a difficult... Because, like, how do I say this? So, using the dualies on this, right? <clears throat> so, you're, you're losing... You're losing the, the width on the front. From, like, 1.1 to... I think it's, like, 0.65. Which is, like, the standard... The standard uh, narrow track, right? And then... Um, but you're gaining width in the back... By, like, 0.2. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. But also you gotta think about like, is, is where, where's the bandit field tippy as well? I can test stability in the training grounds, yeah. Usually, yeah, usually I can. There's like a little test to, to uh, like a little test run. Maybe we can look at that here later. I mean, here's the thing is like <clears throat> I think there's more weight in the cab so I don't I don't know it's a very it's just interesting it's a very interesting thing but yeah I would rather use the dually so I'm gonna say that I like I, I do like how the dualies look I do like how they look <clears throat> I think for this truck you absolutely have to either use the dualies or or the balloons Balloons or, or dualies, just you just need either either or. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this truck kind of off here, and then I'll stop him for there. Let's see if we can get the BM17 back on 27 gallons. Ah, uh, it's gonna be kind of rough. Empty grave, to, empty garage. Did I get empty garage? I didn't. I will though. I'm gonna try to actually take him. Yeah, I'm gonna try to take him the same route. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can get back. Hopefully I don't run out of gas here.
turn up my volume a little bit. Can't believe I didn't bust myself up there. Yeah, so I think the first order of operations is uh, get the garage fully fully updated or fully um, operational. <clears throat> and then I actually need to slow this down to like low plus because I'm burning way too much fuel and high. Come on, baby. We got this. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? Slowing down when that stuff comes up, so. I thought it was good little... Kind of, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to say like gotcha points, but it's kind of uh, an area like, hey, you probably could slow down here and not smash yourself up, or you could just continue on and you know, bust yourself into oblivion. Here we go, a little shortcut. Here we go. You scouted your first map in Wisconsin last night. Nice, I'm taking Black Badger Lake, I'm guessing. Got the P512PF. Looking forward to using it. Nice, man. Welcome in, by the way. go around this so bad, but I can't. Gee, maybe I can. I can maybe I can kind of like kind of skirt the edges here. Ooh. Yeah, the amount of cargo needed is quite crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, didn't you... Urkoop, did you, uh, did you complete Yukon yet? Oh, so you already know about the crazy amount of cargo. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if I can scoop over there and grab that. I don't want to do it, though. I'll just wait. I'll get gas first. I don't need to like... Actually, I need to just go do the main missions right now to get this garage going. A few days ago? Okay, nice. So, there's there's some people that think... How do I say this? Some people think the... The BM-17 has like something of like an open diff or something like that, but... To my knowledge, I thought... I kind of... I thought about that and I think at one point I did think there was some type of an open diff or something of those sorts um, back when I reviewed it but to be honest in the game like it's either diff lock or no diff lock like there is there is no there's nothing hidden is, is I guess what I'm saying is <clears throat> okay it is I think it's called fix my ride mmm Pimp my ride. Oh my goodness. Service spare parts, I think, are here, right? Yeah, yeah, this is great. 
Wait. No. Wait. Cement. Okay, service spare parts up there. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. What does open diff even mean? Honestly, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. So open differential is the most common differential found in passenger vehicles, allowing the wheels to rotate at different speeds. Yeah. So basically, how do I say this? I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure most, most vehicles already have that though. So the, the thing about open differentials is they don't work well on uneven or slippery surfaces because the engine torque transmitted to each wheel. Okay, so basically what happens is there's there's not power transfer to the, the grippiest wheel. So if you're on like uneven surface, like you're not guaranteed to have the wheel spinning that has the most grip onto the surface spinning. That's what I mean, limited slip. Sorry, that's what I mean, limited slip. So limited slip differential. Sorry, W, good correction. So limited slip differential is basically allows uh, the two output shafts to rotate at different speeds, but limits the maximum difference between the two shafts. So that's what it was. It was a limited slip. It was a limited slip. And I think, I think the reason, so I got that, I got that, um, that idea from someone else. And then after looking at the BM 17, how do I say this? It was weird because for not having a diff lock and having medium tires, it goes, it goes through, through the mud. I think a little bit better than I would think. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I just went through that, that mud strip right there and all that stuff back there. And I didn't feel like I was, I was in any type of trouble, I guess. I think I have dinner to serve, but we'll just go check it out. Oh no, I don't have this. Oh, yikes. All right, cool. I'm actually gonna go back and grab this other task back here too. I might as well. You're learning about mot motors in your electrical engineering course? Dude, I don't know anything really about cars, honestly. I mean, I can change my own oil. Um, I can do like simple stuff with a car, but I don't, yeah. I mean, I used to change my own oil at home when I was younger, like when I was in like, you know, high school and college, but yeah, like nothing crazy, like electrical or like motor stuff. Yeah, I just feel like there's, it feels, you know, it could be actually, I think here, here's what it is. I think it's the 51 inch tires. I just think it having, because usually trucks that actually, but hold on a second here. Yeah, I think it just could be it's it's tire height so high that maybe it just feels, I don't know, different. Because not many trucks have 50, not many American trucks actually have 51s. It could just be a magic over 50, maybe. I don't know. I mean, we don't really know. Right there, it's like, see the front tire not working? Yeah, that's definitely definitely an issue right there. I guess I have to bite my tongue on that one, huh? <laughs> You're 17, you changed your power steering fluid? Power steering pump twice, dang. Took you a week? Wow, dude, that's crazy. Yeah, I think, like my dad knew some stuff about cars and stuff like that and like, like just general things. Yeah, you know, something he definitely taught me was like, you should just be, you should be able to change your own, change your own oil, like at the very least. And I was like, okay, I can do that. I'll save some money and not take it into the shop. Go get my own, own oil, my own filter. Ah, why not giving him diff lock? I think if they gave it diff lock, it would probably, 
I don't want to say it would jump up the scales too far with a diff lock, but I think I think it would. The BM17 will make a pretty good come up in the offered class. I think it would definitely stick to A. It, it would definitely go up to the A class. <laughs> Off road truck without diff, yeah. Okay, so let's go get these metal rolls. Actually, let me see if I can string this. Let's check this out here. Let's let's look at this real quick. So fix my ride is four metal rolls. I'll tag that on right now. Pit my ride. Uh, concrete is here. Um, service spare parts are there. I'll get those when I'm up there. Dude, where's my trailer? Oh. Wait, is there vehicle spare parts over here? No, the vehicle spare parts are down here. Hmm, interesting. This, this might be very interesting. Interesting. Um, dang, this is gonna be a lot of cargo. This is gonna be a ton of cargo. So four metal, four metal rolls. Four metal rolls. Let's see. Six metal rolls, one metal beam, vehicle spare. No, I can't take this in all in one go. This can't go in one push. Yeah, I'm not gonna do this in one push. Maybe if I had Femi Boy. Femi Boy could probably do it. Yesterday you hit Insomnia, so I decided to look at Google but always on diff. So it is not a real in real life thing. Yeah, I did I didn't think it was. There's always torque vectoring. Yeah, I think to my understanding, I'm, I've always thought that diff locks are a switchable thing. Like I never understood that they could be always be just always on. So, until SnowRunner. But maybe that's kind of like a, uh, I don't know, maybe that's a way to, to add their own type of balance, I don't know. Who really knows? It's just automatic and clunky. <laughs> You know that the ANK is always on all-wheel drive and diff in real life? Does it really? It's called automatic diffs. I'm actually just going to go. I might try to, I actually might try to bring all six of these up. I actually might try to go six. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. So in a video, narrator mentioned it as Uncle Sam. Don't care. Always on diff lock. That's funny. What's up, SD1? Welcome in as well. Yeah, I suspect that's probably what will happen because you probably would wear out your tires because you have in a turn, you legitimately have all your wheels spinning to my to my knowledge is all your wheels spin at the same rate. OK, so when you're in a turn, your your outside tires, I'm pretty sure are supposed to spin faster to kind of for, for more even more even turning. And I think it helps with with wear on your tires as well. So, yeah, with always on diff. Yeah. 
I don't know. I've never noticed uh, turning issues with diff on in this game. Uh, what am I doing here? Where's my controller? Okay. Anyways, I am going to run to the bathroom real quick, guys, and I'll be right back, and then we'll uh, we'll continue. So hang in there, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> Even in SR, they turn wider as well. Uh, let's if I can get my. Uh oh, there we go. Cool. All right, test to the testing ground we go. Time to test this out. Okay, so I'll just do this. How about this? I'm gonna go into the grass so I actually like can track my my circle here. But first, I'm gonna go up on this little this little hill here. Remember we were talking about mods? Balance. Let's see. This this truck has superb balance. Okay. So look at that hill. Let's see if it survives. I, mean, I gotta go up the hill. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. It, it actually almost went. Okay. Can I get back to my wheels? Oh, I don't have my crane. Okay, sorry. All right. No messing around this time. Got you guys. Sorry. <laughs> So we often skid and turn sharper, hard to explain. Let's see. I, I see like the thing is I never really noticed 
much with uh, with turning radius, like with and without all wheel drive. Okay, let's just rock it here. Here we go. What's up, Victor? Welcome in. All right, so full lock turn. Why is it disappearing? What? Honestly, I don't see much of a difference. Actually, maybe I do see a little bit. Actually, no. I don't see much of a difference, guys. What's up, Victor? Welcome in. What seems to be happening here? We're just looking at like if diff lock is uh, it's probably different with other trucks as well. But yeah, I think it's it's probably different with different trucks. Wait, wait, you said SD one. I've seen your new video. Wait, SD one. You have another video. You have a new video out today. Am I missing something? Am I behind? He does. We're going to have to look at that at some point today. <clears throat> you thought I felt a difference between modded Kiravets when turning? I bet there's, there's times you can't feel a difference. It just, it might be truck dependent, honestly. I think it might be just a truck dependent thing. Okay, so we'll take this to the repair shop. And then actually, you know what? I think I'm taking. No, actually, I know what I'm doing. I know exactly what I'm doing first. I think I'm taking this to. I think it's called dude where's my trailer yeah trailer store <clears throat> i'll take it to the trailer store first so trailer store first and then i'll take to fix my ride stuff over and then we'll just yeah let's do that let's get some stuff done today huh stop messing around well, look, there's that uh, <clears throat> scout fuel trailer that's for a mission. Oh, I probably could take that up there. No, it's fine. I'll do that later. I'm trying to do too many things at once here. Get yourself all messed up. I think I need to put like a truck here. Yeah, I want to get that bridge. Th those bridges going too as well. <clears throat> Probably another thing I'm gonna do right after this is get those bridges all all set set and done. Am I going left? Yes, I am going left. Okay. <gasps> oh, saved by the metal beams, man. Saved by the metal beams. Oh. Saved by the beams. Yo, the crazy thing is, on my first playthrough, I talked about this same spot. I talked about the same spot. I was like, hey, this is a good spot to tip yourself over right here. And lo and behold, look who falls for it. <laughs> oh, good stuff, Nate.
Dude, you know what? That's a, that's actually a kind of a... Is that the move now? Actually, I need to put these metal beams in there somehow. And then, no, you stay out. Because <clears throat> so I actually need to... These go first, so... Will they pack? No. Uh -huh. I don't like that, though. I don't like how that's in the front. You stack four middle beams on the western star and it's untippable. Nice. Ah, oh, dude, I want to be able to do something here, and I can't. Because I don't have not long enough boom. Maybe I do. Yeah, I do. Okay. I just need to do a little twisty here. There we go. Oh, unpack them and push them back. Yeah, that's oh, that's a good idea. Good idea, Victor. It's a good idea. <clears throat> Let's do this. Okay, let me see if I can get my crane in here. Push, push, push. Hmm. I don't know why it didn't push back. Why did you not push back? Not fun. Okay, whatever. It's fine. I'll put this one up front. Good idea, Victor, by the way. Good, good idea. Didn't think of that. <clears throat> it's good thinking. Oh, dude, the waste of time. gonna leave that there. I don't really mind too much. But yeah, this spot right here, you can see how it's like super down sloping. That little ledge right there. And I got fooled. Alright, my dude, could you just, like, chill? Alright. <clears throat> okay, don't fall off. Front wheels on this thing are too squishy too, man. Front suspension just way too.
Yeah, there is a couple deceptive spots, that's for sure. <clears throat> that is for sure. Okay, just don't fall out right now. I don't need any any type of fallout. Oh, nice. That's perfect. Look at that. That's what we were wanting, right, Vic? Look at that. Look at all those duckies. They're all, they're all behaving. Oh, they're all down now. Legit. Now that's a trailer. That's how they should be packed, man. You see what I'm saying? Like Saber, take notes, man. This is how this is how packed cargo should look. Maybe not the one upside down, but I mean, look at that. That's like seven pieces of cargo right there, right? Oh no. No, we know get stuck. Block alpha done. Oh, nice. What do you have, Gamma? In a five slot? Yeah. Yes, sir, in a five slot. Insert comment? Yeah. I know, right? Those things are in insane heavy. What do they weigh? I think like those things are just insane. There, there's no way these trucks would pull the, uh, that many. There's no way. What's up, Netics? Welcome in. You just watched the Giardelli <laughs> chocolate ad? Oh, with the hay bales? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about, SD. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Actually, I need to, I need to do something. I need to activate this other mission. It's, uh, I think it's called Dude, Where's My Trailer? Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> because the middle beam and the two rolls go to, uh, that store. The trail, yeah, it probably would bend. <laughs> vehicle spare parts. I feel like now I probably could have brought the vehicle spare parts. Yeah, packed or unpacked? Because they're unpacked right now. But I mean, in, in real life, those meta, those meta rolls are insane. Oh crap, this is it. It's up this way. Why did it not give me the, the notification? Yeah, man, I'm telling you, those meta rolls are heavy. Still sad for an Australia DLC. All right. Here's that good old generator. Okay, can I? You don't think they're that heavy? Metal rolls in real life? I 
I don't know, man. It still could be open for debate. They did say they're, the new maps are going to be distinctly different. Not as heavy as gold, at least, yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Now... Uh, I wish I had vehicle spare parts right now. It's okay, though. I'll string something together and bring it up this way. Now we go back to the garage. To deliver this to the garage. We play a hunting sim called Call of the Wild. They released the Aussie map. Wow, that's awesome. <clears throat> that's cool. Honestly, SD, I think I think they could. Um, I think from from seeing what they did with uh, expeditions, and I think they could. I think it could be a thing. However, I don't think it should be a thing. To be honest, I think if they, they do add like a desert map, it needs to be like the high desert, kind of like uh, like Flagstaff area, where there's actually snow. I don't know. I think when you make a game called SnowRunner and it has more, like pretty much three quarters of the maps that are not snow. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So. Yeah, I think it definitely they at, at least two of these maps that are basically like Dirt Runner, yeah. It's like Mud Runner 2. That's what they should have just named it is Mud Runner 2. So here's the thing, man, is is being that the truck the truck names and stuff like that, like actually no, never mind. They're not really Usually, like, in the files, it's, like, N.A. or Russia, right? But they've also brought trucks that are not from, like, R.U. And trucks that are not necessarily, like, Northern... Like, North America. Because, like, this truck is not North American, but it's considered a North American truck. You see what I'm saying? Makes sense? So, that, 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 never mind. That argument's out the window. So, never mind. <laughs> Can't go to that one. Let's go fix... I think it's fix my ride. There we go. Yeah, desert and snow is quite common, yeah. That's why I was saying Flagstaff. Flagstaff, Arizona is like 7,200 feet elevation and they get they get snow every year. They actually have a... Uh, nice, dude. They actually have a... Um, they can do skiing. You can ski up there. Refuel and repair. Wait, is that a repair zone? No. Oh, no, never mind. That's, that's the actual garage. Okay, so now Okay, let's see here. I know I need to do the essentials at some point. I knew I need to do short circuit and that's that's still grabbing this junk. But I, I need to go do this other other mission for the What's it called? I think it's pimp my ride <sighs> there service spare parts wow I could go down grab these come back up grab those over to wait service spare oh that's right there in cement I can do this real quick. This is this is real quick. However, I need to pull out a truck to, to refuel myself. And then this is gonna go somewhere else too. Yeah, the desert snow map would be pretty cool. Yeah, they start to avoid the the uh, the RU maps. That's true. That's true. Yeah, they are they are contenders for that.
Yeah, only expeditions has desert at this moment. So I don't know, desert, could that be a thing? Or, the, or do they keep that exclusive to expeditions? I mean, I don't know. Service spare parts. Give me a second. Let me actually make sure. Service bear parts. Cement. Okay, cool. What about this uh, other other one here? Hold on. Vehicle spare parts. Oh, that's right. Okay, actually, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down through here. Grab those. Probably truck myself back up. Deliver those. Grab these, grab those, and then come back down. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, we'll do, where's my trailer? Yeah, get this all, all knocked out here. Yeah, I think they did a pretty good job on Arizona. Yeah, that's kind of like my thoughts. Like, why not just make another Russian map, to be honest? Um, I wouldn't be opposed. I definitely wouldn't be opposed of it. Wow, 6.6 .6 gallons per minute there. I think after we do this, we're going to switch out the BM-17, I think. We're going to rock the BM-17 here for a little bit, and then I'm going to switch it out. I do like this truck, man, but man, I slammed my nose so much. Honestly, I think it's I think it's very stupid. And well, I don't know if I want to use the word stupid. I think it's uh yeah, I'll use the word stupid. Just to not make a region specific map based upon a war. I don't know. I, I just like it's a video game, it has nothing to do with it, right? It's literally just a, a game about trucks and helping a civilization. Like there's I don't find that, I don't find that to be some type of, uh, infraction of anything. I just don't, I don't know, that's just me. Some of the devs are personally affected by the war. So you think it's like, it's more of a personal thing why they're not making Russian maps anymore? I mean, but like, I don't know. There probably is some type of, I guess, yeah, maybe if they're affected by it, maybe that's, it's like a personal thing. But it's, I don't think it's, it's not like you're, you're supporting, supporting anything by just making a map in a general area, you know what I'm saying? But. Yeah, if they were just generic. What, wasn't that... What, wasn't places in, like, Mudrunner generic? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I know that, like, there was, like, the American Wilds and stuff like that, but, like, really, it wasn't, like, a, like a state or a country or something like that. I don't know. No, they haven't. They haven't made any, any type of, uh... They haven't made any statements about it. I think it's kind of smart, though, to not make a statement about it. I know, I know that here's what happened is, uh, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that when everything was going down, we were getting season seven, right? Okay. And because of, because of people being displaced and stuff like that, that actually it was, it was a, a totally different team 
that I, I think that was working on I think it might have even been the car I think the team that was working on the car actually had to pivot and work on SnowRunner so the normal SnowRunner devs had to actually give kind of give some type of continuity to the the devs of the car so to be that's why we got um all that racing and stuff like that in season seven which yeah and basically one one map is because they weren't the, like the people that made season seven weren't really the devs that were creating content for snowrunner They were more of a scenic river map? Yeah. No, you're right. That's right, SD1. Yeah. That's true. That's true, W. Yeah, there are. I mean, they can make they can make a Switzer a Switzerland map. Dude, that'd be sick, right? That's gotta be snow. <clears throat> you make a Switzer Switzerland map, that's gotta be snow. I'm just just saying. I'm gonna throw that out there. All right. Actually, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take this all the way up, and we're just gonna grab the the stuff from there. Bring this down. Take this to the trailer store, and then come down here to the warehouse to grab uh, cement. I think. I mean, Antarctica would be cool, but it would be really flat though, because it's it is kind of flat. I think so for the most part. Unless they use their imagination and make something. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. Good place to use chain tires, though, right? Trucks with chain tires will uh, kind of thrive. Iceland would be cool, yeah. Those are all good, all good uh, ideas. about like Greenland so the thing is there's a saying about Iceland and Greenland it is uh people think that Greenland is green but actually I think I think Greenland there's a there's an old saying it's it's that Greenland is covered with ice and and Iceland is very nice but I'm sure Iceland gets gets bad snow as well What about, uh, I don't know, I think like Tierra del Fuego would be a pretty cool map. It's like a very rainy, it's like one of the rainiest uh, rainforests. Not rainforest, but it's like a deciduous. I think it's called deciduous forest. So like, I think, isn't deciduous? I think it's deciduous. But yeah, Tierra del Fuego has a lot of rainfall, uh, very green. I'm not sure what the winter is like there. I don't know how much snow falls, but... I've seen some uh, some survival shows in Tierra del Fuego, and it was kind of kind of crazy. Maybe some African maps, African countries. See some lions, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, maybe seasons to existing maps. Yes. That is a good idea. That is a good idea. Maybe maybe Naked Dave's uh, little rendition of what's called adding snow and removing snow was a pretty good idea. I think you're right, Max. I think you're right. I think it, I think it is the Sig Wait, let me see what the Tierra del Fuego. Here, I'll show you guys. Here's Tierra del Fuego. Here is Tierra del Fuego. 
あっ kind of like this so yeah kind of like this that's pretty pretty sweet like so it does have deciduous but also has evergreen so he said it is possible yeah I honestly that'd be cool if it was possible that'd be sweet I'm like struggling to keep this thing on its wheels right now. I feel like it's just going left and right. Yeah, weather cycles would be cool. Yeah, it look it looks lovely, but I, I mean, I'd hate to be stranded there from what I've seen. <laughs> I watch a lot of survival shows, man, or I used to a lot. And honestly, I think I think a lot of people should actually watch survival shows because the thing is, you never know when you'll be traveling somewhere and. Like you'll be stranded in some form or fashion. So like I think just having some knowledge on, on what to do is I don't know. Knowledge is power and it's very lightweight. So But yeah, I just just from watching like survival shows and stuff like that, I just picked up on a lot of stuff like that. Um I think even places like Scotland look really cool there's not a lot of there's not a lot of trees in like the high moors of what i've seen so far like on on some shows but like actually there's a lot of trees never mind let me just let me back up there there are um but yeah i think it'd be cool have like rolling those rolling hills the cliffs stuff like that cliffs that are close to the water that you kind of have to like descend down into to deliver to like i don't know like a ford operating mining company or something like that or I don't know I'm spitballing here you used to watch survival shows as a kid you find out they're fake <laughs> I think people were saying like Bear Girl, the Bear Girls one was fake is it vehicle is it spare parts I think it's service I think it's service spare parts <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Service. And then I take that there. I don't know. I don't know if, if it's if, if it was fake or not. I've heard that rumor that he goes to like a hotel after after like each day or something like that and then comes back out the next day. Yeah, even if it is fake, it definitely is, is very informational. You know what? Full screen. Keep, her, keep forgetting that. Okay, so we deliver these two vehicle spare parts. I go grab the two cement. I come back to, I believe it's... The garage. Unlock that. So then that will be done, hopefully. And then I need to figure out the mission chain for those bridges. Because I want to get those bridges up and running. I definitely like using those bridges. So I definitely want to uh, try and get those going as fast as possible. Uh, that's to the gateway. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, who knows? Season 13 PTS could drop today. It could drop tomorrow. It could drop... I don't know. Thursday, Friday. What's up, Velocity? Welcome in. I mean, who knows? Maybe it is pushed back until like... The first week of April. But, I mean, they are... They are bringing out the Azov Adam 
on time. They did they did say early early April, so April second, you know, it's coming out. Boom. I think that's my brother's birth I think that's my brother or my sister's birthday actually. Oh yeah. It's great. I think so. I think one one of their birthdays is on the second, one of them are on the fourth. I'm pretty sure my sister is on the second and my brother's on the fourth. We got ourselves. No, it's not part of the year four pass. It's a standalone DLC. Yep, standalone. Standalone DLC. Nice, we have ourselves. Give me a second. I'm gonna do some little bit of fuel stealing here. Actually, what is in this trailer shop? Vehicle spare parts. I probably didn't even need to have. Oh, I didn't even have to go all the way down south then, because I could have just unlocked this, grabbed the vehicle spare parts there right now. <laughs> you live and you learn, man. Did I read the new updates for expeditions? I kind of read them a little bit. Basically, they they've made the the Snowrunner controls for expeditions and such. What's up, Joe? Welcome in. Oh. I don't know why I'm going in there for gas. I don't need gas. gonna be it's called pimp my ride wait for cement okay expedition don't give you confidence for the sr for the future of the sr series honestly um <laughs> i think it it yeah i can agree I can agree. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm just hoping that moving forward, they learn some things from, from that release. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm really just hoping it's, uh, <clears throat> it's a learning experience. Cause I think right now their steam reviews are down to like 50, 52% right now. They were 58. Like I think like the day after it launched, which is terrible by the way. Um, the next day it fell 4%, which was to 54%. And then I think the following day or two, it fell to 53 and then now it's at 52. So yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't look good. I don't know. I do think, I do think Expeditions is a good game for people to play. I've said this, I'll say this every day pretty much is it's a good game for people that want to explore want to explore and kind of uh, navigate like areas that necessarily don't have human or I guess or that are not like touched by humans as much as like snow runner is right or a simulated way but other than that yeah I don't know It's it's a it's a good game. I, I don't want to I don't want to like thrash it, but definitely not a game that uh, appeals to me. I guess. And I think yesterday I kind of said that um, I did feel like kind of a when I when I decided I wasn't going to play it, I kind of felt like a sigh of relief. I think it was kind of like because how do I say this? 
when I was playing the game, I don't think, how do I say this? I don't think vehicle performance in that game really, like there were, I thought to myself like, how, how would I even make, another, another thing is like, just from, separate from just in not really enjoying the whole concept of the game and the mini games and the cartoonish futuristic look of, of vehicles and stuff like that and how, how I felt about it. I, I wondered to myself, I'm like, is it even worthing? Like, is it even worth diving in, looking at vehicle performance and stuff like that? Because, to be honest, I don't think it really matters as much. You're not really hauling cargo. I mean, your engine power doesn't matter as much. Like, you're kind of more or less going for efficiency because for the duration I was playing, the whole 21 hours I was playing, I never used really an upgraded engine and I was fine like you know I rescued the Kotko Canyon with a, a base game engine in a high range gearbox and, and it was fine right I was literally like riding up like driving up slopes towing this thing that didn't have an engine on it and I just wondered I'm like is there there's not even really a reason to make any type or it's like a deep dive vehicles in that game where I would feel like I was doing it was like I was reviewing a truck over again that I previous did, like I previously mentioned in SR or something. I don't know. So in that way, I kind of felt like a, a sigh of relief because like, yeah, it's a lot of work. Forza Motorsport has 92% negative reviews, 8% mixed and no positive. Are you serious? What's up, Akimoto? Welcome in. That is crazy. You like to explore, but the futuristic aesthetics of vehicles and devices just breaks the immersion for me. I think so too, SD. Um, I found that when I was on Arizona, which is a very red map. Um, <laughs> the map is red, but the thing is like, you get red dirt. You can, you can visibly see red dirt on tires when, when like it rains or something like that. And you drive through like a muddy pit, right? And that red dirt kind of like hits, hits your vehicle and it kind of shows then. But like in Arizona, not in all these places, is the red dirt like very vibrant like that. Like in Sedona, if you look at like Sedona area, it is. Okay. But it's not like that all over Arizona. It's just not. Um, like I lived in central Arizona, which is like 5,000 feet elevation. No, Yo, what's getting... up, Juice? Welcome in. Dude. My dude, welcome in. But yeah, at some point I felt like I was on planet Mars with some type of truck with this bob on top that I was like trying to do te detect things with like yeah I just it, yeah I don't know very futuristic so it, yeah it kind of ruined I don't say it ruined it it was just hard to like get into the immersion so what's the big update they have for us um nice there's the customizations Essentially, I'm getting a new truck out, guys. I can't do it anymore. Well, I can do it. It's just I, I want to drive something else. I want to drive something a little bit more. I don't want to say efficient, but kind of. In Expeditions, pre pretty much, I think... Did they put the Scout 800 in Expeditions yet? I don't know if they did or not. I didn't really look at the patch notes, man, because I'm not really too concerned with it. But I know they made the... Uh, the controls for SnowRunner are now in Expeditions. Okay, I'm gonna whip something out here. Ah, oh, step, can you steppy step? Steppy, steppy, steppy? I don't know. Do I wanna buy something? HX520. Snowrunner controls and map centering on the truck. Yes, that was another really annoying thing. Yo, Waggle, welcome in. Thank you for that follow. Yep, April 2nd as of Adam. Yep, we're going to try to get it. Oh. Should I get the dairy? Should I get the dairy? K 
Can you get the- yes, I'm playing- I'm playing PC right now. Yeah, you can. You just- um, I think you just disable- I think you disable, uh, controller support in Steam. So if you're- if you're buying the game from Steam, you have to disable the- the, uh, controller support. But the game recognizes it. I believe that's how it goes. Will I get over it? No. Mm. No. But life. life goes on. Yep. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll get we'll get that truck soon. But I need to get something. Oh. I think we'll buy that soon. It's just I need I need a I need a crane. I have to go pick up a bunch of vehicles and deliver them. That's the only thing. You know what? I'm just gonna break this guy out here again. But we will buy a truck soon. We we definitely are buying the Atom. Ooh, the 1430. Hold on a second. Maybe we will buy the 1430. <laughs> Do I buy the 1430? Well, we did it. Forty-four inch OHDs. I'm just leaving the stock winch. I don't really care. Low saddle crane. Front side. Get all this jazz off the top of my truck. I use the top of my truck to, <laughs> to put things on. <laughs> I kind of like the flat cap. I don't know why I do. I'm actually going to buy the Dairy 4520 at some point in this playthrough. I'm not, I mean, like some point in this series, I'm going to buy it. Rims. You think it it will be more like the dairy special capable but slow scout dlc scout is a dlc i think oh yeah i can't imagine that either that's a good point sd that's a very good point this they say that the atom will be slow and not that powerful i'm that's what i'm guessing i'm guessing it's literally going to be a 64131 64131 with three slot cargo and uh, some special stuff. Is there a difference between the OHD1 and OHD2 or any other tires with the same name? Yes. Yes, there is coding differences. Yep. Sometimes there's even like differences in width from those variants of tires. But however, that's more or less like, a, I think the only, the only one that's different was, is like the MHS1 versus like an MHS2. Okay, MHS-1 is very thin. MHS-2 is a very thick tire. Yep. Yeah, OHD-1 is pretty much on everything that you can use them on. Unless you're a super tippy truck and then I would just probably use something else. Ooh, I like that white. Let's go. One of my faves. Wish they would add it as of six by six. That'd be sweet. Yeah, saying I I agree. I agree. The man TGS. I don't know if I know that one, but okay. So let me see if I can. Is it not? It's not derailed. Oh, it's not reloading. Everyone gets a log. Is it pine line energy? No. 
Where is that? I'm trying to figure out. Split is it split loop? Yeah, it's split loop. Okay, so I need to do reloading. Oh, dude, reloading. Large scout trailer. Okay, this is actually fine. I'm actually going to repair him real quick in the garage. I don't really care about cash right now. Let's go get this, this scout trailer. You wish they would add the man? Oh yeah, I just read that. You wish they would add the Robin Reliant? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get this bridge knocked out. Get this, get all the infrastructure or, or most of the infrastructure that can allow me to pass through. Unlocked here. I should check it out the man TGS. It's a sick truck. Yeah, I definitely will. There's a 4x4, a 6x6, an 8x8. Hmm, the 6x6 does look interesting. Or sound interesting. So yeah, anyways, I, I probably am sp spending a lot of cash here and wasting a lot of cash, as you guys probably can, can understand and see, but we're, we're basically slotted to make like almost a million dollars on this map, so I'm not too concerned with money. Um, I just don't, I don't know. I don't know how much hard mode I'm going to play after season, season 12, to be honest. So it might be a YOLO type thing, a YOLO type region, you know what I'm saying? in some form. Maybe not completely. <laughs> because if I decide, well, watch, I'll probably decide to, to continue this. Yeah, this is like Smithfield Dam vibes, yeah. Kind of feels like it. It's the music from the screen. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, okay. Um, what's the faster way here? Probably can just roll this way, I'm guessing. Uh, did I get the old barn? You know what? I'll go get the old barn. Go grab this real quick. Actually, I don't need to do that. I can just go like this. And then go like this. And then here. After that, <clears throat> yeah, back through. To short circuit. And I probably need to get the essentials. And I think that's pretty much... Yeah, everyone. Yeah, they do have this that nostalgia. <clears throat> yeah, honestly, man, like, I. Th that's why like Michigan's always gonna be one of my favorite maps. It's always gonna be. There's just something about it. Can I touch that area without it me going down there? Nice. Mm. 
You want to start a new game in a different region and come back later to destroy Michigan with late game trucks? This truck is crazy, dude. Not even this trailer can like throw it off balance, nor a hill. <laughs> Literally driving this thing like I stole it right now. <laughs> Just so funny. No! I was about to smash myself there. Oh my gosh, yeah, they would be so annoying. They would be very annoying. You know what? Actually, we are cool at... Dude, I was thinking about something. You could actually put another trailer on top of this and pack it down. I think. If it gave you the option. So... Yeah, like a scow fuel trailer on top of that. But then again... How, how often would it fall off with how crazy I drive with this thing? But it almost seems like you can legitimately put the, the wheels right on those rails. So then you would have a big old repair trailer and fuel trailer and you just go. But then again, there's maps that uh you need to use the prototype exploration unit and then that just kind of takes... Oh, it takes the fun out of it all. Which I hope in the new seasons they actually uh, make the, the towers kind of cover everything. I'm so hoping for that. I doubt they will because of uh, they probably want people to spend more time. Oh. You know what? I might pull this. I might pull this. The parking lot? Where's the parking lot? Hmm. You know what? You're coming with me, mister. This is going to be probably a terrible thing to do. <laughs> oh, this is probably one of the more stupid things ever, but it's fine. You know, down the road from my house, there's actually that same trailer that I'm like winching right now. Same trailer, except for the cargo. What's up, offset? Welcome in. Yeah, we might as well just do this. Hold on a second. How goes running? Running's good. Yeah, it's good. It's going good, I think. Just uh, trying to unlock some things. Let's go reloading. Yeah, there we go. Make sure I grab our old circuit or short circuit here. They did overuse it. They did overuse it so much, man. It's it's like a nuisance. It really is. It just doesn't feel good to use. Yeah, the Lodestar is such a such a go-to. In a world where scouts are just uh Oh no, I don't want to go that way. I actually want to go this way. I'm high centered right now, of course. You 
in a world where like scouts have trouble with uh, trailers, you have the Lodestar that just does things like this. He just doesn't care. You've been using the H1? Nice, dude. How about a scout with a built-in... That'd be sweet. That'd be pretty cool. Wait, what's that over here? Oh, that's a turn-in area. I think the treasure is another thing I'd... You're diving for treasure. Okay, cool. Let's just go. <clears throat> turn this in. And then we'll uh, take the old barn task. Yeah. yeah, I got that already. Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna strip some uh, gas from this thing here. Let's just get up, get up farther here before I actually do this. Let's repair as well. Okay, let's go. There we go. Warehouse access, sick. Honestly, I hope that hopefully they do listen about season 10 because I think it was a nice balance, to be honest. Yeah, I think it would be a nice balance. Okay, so now let's do this old barn real quick and then we're gonna unlock that uh Yeah, we'll unlock we'll start doing those those uh what's it called? Um The bridges. The bridges, yes. Um I kinda wanna go through this this forest. I think we're gonna try it. I know I tried this before and I picked my way through and it's really bumpy back here too. But we'll we'll just do it with the scout. I did it with, uh, what was it? Like a 6455B, I think, la well, on normal mode. And I don't, didn't really see, like, an optimal way to actually, like, traverse it. Wow, dude, that's crazy. Yeah, same with the metal detector, honestly. Like, it should just be something you just mount on your truck, because, yeah. They're not fun to play with, I'm going to say that straight up. <laughs> or you should be able to mount it and have other add-ons, I guess. Don't get caught. Of course they get caught. Ah. Oh. Okay, I guess I'll just go up a, a tiny bit farther. And then cut over after this little rock formation. Actually, it's not too bad. But honestly, like... Could I convince someone that this is a good shortcut with cargo? Probably not. Probably not. I think uh, there's a lot of people that you just can't convince on certain shortcuts. Dang, man, I'm just cracking myself right now. But honestly, that's actually not a bad shortcut. I mean, it's pretty open. It's actually not bad at all. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good shortcut to my in my opinion.
You know what I could have done, too? Ah, oh, the other... There's a scout trailer down there, but I couldn't winch two trailers at once. It's okay, though. There's another mission for a scout trailer down there, but I need to, uh... I'll siphon some out of that, too, as well. this in here. Okay, sweet. Now, I think it's, um, what's it called? It's all connected. No. Lost and found? No. I will be right back, guys.
Okay, we are back. <clears throat> You're having some nice black coffee? Yo, so I heard something about black coffee. So if, if you drink black coffee with like creamer, I believe you take the phytochemicals that have like the, like the anti-inflammatory properties and um, I forget what else. Basically, because there's a lot of, uh, I forget what it is. Let me actually find this. Okay, antioxidants. So your antioxidants and your phytochemicals that are in coffee, if you put milk in coffee, the dairy actually absorbs a lot of those. So you aren't absorbing all of those antioxidants and phytochemicals um, yeah, as normal because the, the dairy is actually absorbing those and it's heated, like, especially when you put it in like, you know, coffee, milk, in a heated way. So you're heating up the co the milk as well when you're pouring it in. Another thing, the same thing is with like yogurt and like blueberries, same thing. I don't drink it with sugar, but I mean, if you'd like sugar, drink it with sugar. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's go. Gosh, what do I gotta do here? Okay, I think it's called <gasps> split loop. So beams, okay, so I need two beams, two concrete block, four concrete blocks. Where the concrete at? Oh, down here. Four concrete blocks, two metal beams. Copy that. Let's do it. Western Star, NF, 1430. Thank you, science. To <laughs> Tell me to drink more coffee. <laughs> wow, I almost think I should have put the high range gear box on this. It's amazing now. So there was a, there should be a link on that video, Akimoto, showing you the updates for this for these trucks. Um, I think now. I think now the truck is great. I'm a little bit fuel hungry, especially with uh, how much power it has, but I think it's great. This is my favorite one of them all, honestly. So this is the best thing on 44 inch tires, man. It's a bold claim. <laughs> bold claim? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It does missing the all wheel drive in the front or the actual like transfer case. Um, the really short one is not useless. It just, um, it just doesn't have what, how do I say this? It just doesn't have, um, it's more or less just like a prime mover, which is fine. Yeah, which is fine. But yeah. Okay, hold on a second, guys. I need to turn on my, my space heater down here. Here we go. I'm trying to miss this mud pit. Yeah, I think this one definitely is more balanced um, or definitely has better stability than all the other ones. I mean, the only one that has OHD tires. So. I don't know. I don't know what it's doing in an off-road game. That's a good, that's a good point. 
That's what I'm saying, man. A lot of these trucks don't really belong in an off-roading game. Let's be real. Okay, so I need... I need two concrete blocks, I believe. No, four. One, two, three, four. Copy that. And the axle. The double dead axle, actually. We got dubs. Yeah, man, this map, this map throws me, throws me through a loop, or th this whole region does. Everything is so out of order for me. It's just kind of crazy. It's just so out of order. I legitimately have been spending two hours doing contracts mostly, and not tasks. It's just weird. It's, it's weird, but it's fine. Here you go. And it has a pretty good horn too. Look at the I mean look at the lights too, man. I saw one of these the other day. I don't know if it was it definitely wasn't this variant. I don't think so. I think it probably was the other one. Like just the regular the 1424, but man. Like seeing the LED lights in the front and then like the reds, it just looks good. I'm not a fan of the puzzle like mission structure either. <laughs> I am not either, yeah, especially for four maps. I think they just did it. They honestly did it just to cause confusion and make make people spend more time. I think so, but contracts reversal tasks. Is it like Ontario? Was Ontario like that? I don't know if Ontario was like that in, in, in entirety, but maybe a little bit. What truck is that? This is called the Western Star um, NF1430. 47X. So Western Star 47X NF1430. It's a very long, uh, very long title. Great truck. Great truck. It's the hottest thing on 40, 47 inch wheels. Or 44 inch wheels. It is a DLC. It's, it comes in a pack of three. Yeah, no, you're... SD, I'm, I'm with you, man. You're exactly right. You are exactly right. I don't, I don't understand why they need to make things even longer for... A game that's already a thousand hours. I totally agree. <clears throat> oh, you didn't get the Western Star pack? It's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. I mean, now it is. Because they gave them, they gave them all all-wheel drive, so. But before that... Come on, dude. Can you just stay on? Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, but prior to, like, when they first got released, none of them had all-wheel drive at all. So, people were outraged. Oh, the outrage, the crying, the outrage. Is it similar? Um, I think... I'm gonna be real, I think it's better. I do, I think it's better. Doesn't have a diff lock. But it has, you know, a 220,000 torque engine. Pretty darn good balance. And also, um, I need to get, I'm trying to think of a way to get it back up there effectively. I guess we'll go this way. And yeah, it has OHD tires, which are only 44 inches, but it, uh, the truck goes pretty well. Good saddle placement. It's a, it's a fun truck, man. I'm going to say that. It's a fun truck.
You like the mission structure? It gives a feeling of progression. I wish it was easier to know the structure. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I would say I wish it kind of knew. I don't know. It's just weird. It's just a very... But honestly, like the, the CT681 International HX are, are really good trucks. They're, I like them a lot, to be honest. But I do think this one, one is better. Yeah, I just, I don't know. Here's the thing, man. On a, it, it's okay. I think it's okay to do like the, the out of order mission structure, but come on, man, not on a four map region. Like I'm, I'm, I'm literally, I'm, I'm on the camp of SD1 right now. Like th there shouldn't have been, I, I, I'm just going to say this. Oh, I can't even, I can't even see. I mean, four maps and then you have everything kind of like cr in, in like a crazy order. I think it was just to make the game longer. That's, that's all I think it was for. Add confusion. But, because it, it's kind of overwhelming. Like, right, you open up the, open up the game, and, uh, you know, you have 108 missions, which is the most, the most missions in any SnowRunner DLC. And it, it's just kind of overwhelming at first. But, I mean, after you get going, it's, it's fine, but, but yeah. What's up, Crimson? Welcome in. This definitely is one way to do things. Yeah, it is. This truck eats this stuff up, man. Like, look at this. <laughs> no diff lock. Just OHD tires, man. Just OHD tires and some weight on wheels. Five slot trailer. Put some weight on the back tires and just go. I mean, yeah, it'll eat some fuel. I'll say that this truck can eat some fuel up, but. <clears throat> can you quickly show the cockpit view? Oh yeah, there we go. There's the cockpit view. Yeah, OHTs are always better than MHS, dude. They didn't believe you. All you do is tell them, I have three videos on it. Just tell them to go watch them. I have three videos covering tires right now. I mean, the testing has already been done. Yeah, the testing has been done. What's up, Oreo? Welcome in. You're missing episode 24 of Amor? Am I really? Hold on, let me look. Let's look. Episode 24. 25. Oh. I am missing 24. Oh, it might, it might just be numbered wrong. It might just be numbered wrong. So it goes from... 20, 22, 23 to... Yeah. Yeah, it skips. It skips. Good catch, though. Good catch, man. Yep, that's just uh, the human part of me. So, sorry about that. Probably not the first time it's happened, and uh, it's probably not the last, to be honest. <clears throat> but yeah, 
OHDs over over MHS all day. Yo, Smurf, welcome in. Oof. Are we stuck here? I think we are. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. So, does anyone even care or like expeditions? I have, I've seen many people playing it. <clears throat> Wait, what do you mean? Um, I'm not really a fan of expeditions, to be honest. But I think there's still a lot of people that like it. I mean, I'm sure there's a some some enjoyers of it. I'm not sure on a more an episode consists of getting some things done, but struggling mostly. <laughs> Just finished Erska, nice. Besides the final rocket assembly, we'll take a break then jump at the NAI, nice, dude. Nice. What's up, Whitefield? Stuff is going down on your road? I feel like stuff is always going down on, on your road. That's what you meant? <clears throat> um, yeah, there's not a lot of people playing it, man. I think there was a lot of folks that were sponsored to play it when it first came out, and then after that, it just kind of died off. But I don't think it's having the same impact as SnowRunner has had on the, the community, to be honest. Wait, let me see what SD said. So I currently play Averio Hills. Is the rail section spawning in the in the wrong orientation on the cargo platform? It gets stuck. I think. Yeah, I think you just nudge it with the crane. I don't know if you actually have to like take them over and pack them and take them in. I think it's just you put them over the zone and then I think, I feel like all of them are just so, so different. Wait, I have concrete blocks. Okay, we have one bridge. <clears throat> Truck turned around and came back down eventually. Oh, nice. You skipped my my more videos up to NA, NAI. Ah, okay, gotcha. Yeah, SD, I think I think that, that part with the rails, I don't know if it's you just place them in the area and then I don't know. I honestly I don't know. Mm, where's the other one at? I think it's called No. Split loop two. There we go. We have we have ourselves some bridges now. All right, cool. <clears throat> that is good. Okay, so now I could do the to the two towers. I'm not going to do that. I like the uh, the reference there though. Cargo containers. I could do this. I'm not going to do that yet. One second, I think I got a call, a missed call from somebody. One second, y'all.
Okay. I'm back. You've been trying to figure out what is is off with the dairy special. I think I realize now it never loses gear. It's just too powerful in the transmission. Too powerful. No, it's because it doesn't have a diff lock. So it'll just thread it'll just thread um so it's basically so when it doesn't have a diff lock, it's it's tires that maybe don't have grip down on the surface are still spinning, right? And not the tires that are actually digging in or spinning. So the power is being transferred to wheels that are not necessarily needed as much power, but the truck has enough power to hold to hold the gear and then continue. It's it's kind of weird. But if it was like a diff lock, it would be very similar to like how the 605R operates, I guess. What's the 612? Should I use the chain tires for the Zig 612 and NAI? No. <clears throat> nope. Custom tires. Nate, have you ever tested the transmission strain limits on these extreme trucks like the Dairy Special? No. What do you mean transmission strain limit? You mean like just have them under load? Like maximum pulling, pulling potential? That I have. Not how much, I mean, that's honestly, that's how do I say that? I don't say that's irrelevant, but anytime that you feel as if your truck is going to downshift, you just immediately pushed high. <clears throat> That's what you do. You immediately push high. <clears throat> so like, let's say I'm in the, in like the Zig 605 R and I'm pulling a trailer, right? And I'm in fifth gear and I feel my truck start to whine. I feel it starting to slow down. Like it's going to downshift all the way to first. It's either I clutch bump and it bumps it down to third or I just slam high. And then once I feel like high is in a point where the, the gallons per minute kind of shallows out and slows down. If high, if, if my consumption is high in high gear, I'm going to leave it in high because I know that I'm hitting deep terrain or terrain that is going against my vehicle, right? So it's the vehicle's working harder to keep high. Now, if your consumption is low, when you're in high gear, you can shift out because yeah, you're not, nothing's really forcing your truck to, to maintain that setting. Because high gear is essentially a speed limiter, where every every gear every gear in your truck is a speed limiter. Yeah, the stock tires are better. They have special coatings. Yeah, they're good. They they definitely are buffed. Okay. Um. Let's see. What do I got? Dinner is served. Curtain side. I probably could go grab this curtain side. Vehicle spare parts. That's up there. Generator. Wow. This is so much stuff. Um, I almost feel like I need another truck for all this stuff. <laughs> the Lodestar. Drilling spare parts. <clears throat> wow. Okay, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to do one one thing at a time here. Okay, I'm I'm actually going to grab a different truck. I feel like I can do stuff with uh, a smaller truck <clears throat> here. Yes, it does. It gives you better because it's just basically forcing power. If you're able to to keep the truck in in like a high gear, you're just you're just forcing power. To the wheels. Ooh, I could use the six four five five B to do some of this stuff. Could use Danny Boy. <clears throat> I need, I need, a, I need a crane though.
Yeah, high gear is high torque. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially, that's pretty much uh, pretty much a good <laughs> good way to explain it. <clears throat> You know what? I'm pretty sure I can pull a trailer with this. Okay, so let's do some things. We're gonna do some things here. Um, I gotta figure this out. Uh that to there. <clears throat> Generator to there. Scout fuel trailer, so. Okay, I'm just gonna go do this right now. I'm just gonna run around, <clears throat> go do some stuff with this truck, I guess. There's so many things I want to try to string together, and I, I can't do it right now. High torque and high speed. So torque is is direct the relation to wheel speed. <clears throat> I've definitely I've explained this on on videos basically. So like high gear, basically you're at your highest speed on each gear. You essentially have the maximum torque in that gear, but the torque setting for that gear is set to a, a specific location or a specific speed. <clears throat> Does that make sense? To be honest, no. Okay. <clears throat> Max, I thought I thought you have you watched my videos on this before? I've expl I've explained this before in gearbox videos. So <clears throat> here's what I mean. So the X axis here is speed. Okay. Your X axis is speed. Doesn't connect with your experience in the game. Wheel speed. Yes, basically it's just wheel speed. Angular velocity is just a term for in my my understanding is wheel speed. So you can see like low minus, low, low plus, which is essentially first gear as well. Low plus is is first gear. <clears throat> okay, so you can see these all max out at a hundred percent torque. However, they don't start that way from a standstill. Okay, you see. If you're at a complete standstill and you throw in, in in what's it called? And you throw in low plus, you're only you're only getting less about 45% of your torque value. So, you know, then if you go up to like low, you're getting a little less under than under 75. Low minus, you're getting you know close to 100, but you're not. This is about 80 80 some percent. Is torque speed or not? This is power. This is literally power, 25, 50, 75, 100% of your torque. This is the percent values of your torque. 
So the vehicle's torque is a set, set value. Here's the percentage of what you're gaining from that setting of gear. So as you can see, it takes very little speed moving on the X axis to attain 100% torque in low minus. A little bit more in low, low plus, a little bit more. However, when you throw it in high range, okay, and you actually get it into high, you get to 125 percent of your torque, right? So, but you have to be at this speed. So you're not always going to be at this speed 100% of the time, depending on what terrain you're hitting. But the goal is to get yourself into high gear because it gives you a 25% bonus of torque at the highest heights of, of high gear. This is the off-road gearbox, so it's different. The high range gearbox, your, your high gear would be out here because the speed in high range gearbox is a lot faster. But you can see like, yeah, you know, second gear is like here, right? So usually if you can get into second gear, you immediately just want to throw high because you can see how this these torque values trend down. You're not you don't have a lot of torque in third and fourth. Yeah, because Max was asking a question. What's up, Doc? Welcome in. But yeah, that's just that's the easiest way I can explain it. <clears throat> torque is directly um, related to wheel speed, and gearboxes are essentially speed limiters, and they have associated torque value with them. Okay, I'm just going to run around and, and just do some of these tasks with, with this truck because, I, I don't know, I, I can't really, like, string things together. Lednor, you actually did a pretty good job uh, explaining it, too. Yeah, you did a pretty good job. Whoa, dude. I forget how tippy this truck is. I forget myself. Is there anything else that needs to go up to up to this? Up to comms tower? Wait, what? Why is it not showing the comms tower? The comms tower is here. Okay. Is there anything that needs to go up there? <clears throat> Deliver to the retreat. Okay, that goes there. service spare parts I probably could have did this oh I probably should have done this I'm gonna turn around and just bring this I'm just gonna turn around and grab this real quick we'll do the fishing spot I probably can <clears throat> I might just go get grab this bring it down grab the fleet star wait and grab this little I don't know we'll, we'll figure it out Ugh. I hate trying to string things together man <laughs> I feel like I never get it right <clears throat> alright let's go let's go do try to do some stuff try to knock this out But Max, does that make does that make sense now? Kind of. <clears throat> it doesn't make sense. Okay, so what what's confusing about it? Sure, I can I can explain it to you. I can try to. <clears throat> so you said in, in your experience, 
It doesn't connect. So what do you what do you mean by it doesn't connect? Actually, you know what? I can prop after I deliver this. I actually have an idea. I can actually deliver the uh, the 49x. I can deliver the 49x down there. I think. So I'll be right there. can't say this is the most efficient run in my life, but hey. Get yeah, service spare parts. Okay, so I think I have an idea of what I'm going to do. I'll deliver the service spare parts. I think I'll take the... Maybe pull the Western Star down to its location. I think from there, maybe grab the... Um, the Scout Fuel Trailer. And then maybe also grab the Lodestar mission. Put the Lodestar in the bed, winch the trailer, and then I think all those go back up north, so it's a good little, maybe a good little pull. Is it just yours main a bit of a pain? <clears throat> Which part? <laughs> Which part? It can be a pain. The second map can be a pain for sure. High gear is optimized for that rev range. So I think I think you're right. So basically what the truck does, okay? Like if I'm in high gear right now, okay? So right now I have 100%, 125% of my torque. Now you can see my gallons per minute is 0.8. Now if I would hit any type of terrain, the truck is going to say use all available power that we have to maintain this 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 speed, okay? So the truck is going to try and maintain that that throttle setting or that that speed limiter. Okay, it's always going to try when you or you're in high gear. It's always going to try to get to the maximum speed. So it's going to use all available power to get there. When there isn't a lot of resistance, the truck doesn't have to work hard. Therefore, you have low gallons per minute. See, my burn value is super low right now. It's because the truck doesn't really need to to work really hard. But like for, for the off road gearbox box, you don't have to chase the speed, the speed limiter at the higher heights as much as you do with like the high range gearbox. Because the speed is set so far out that the truck feels like it constantly has to accelerate to keep that, right? 
So yeah, um, I'm actually going to go in here and get some fuel. <clears throat> Grab a little quick drink so I can actually make it to the location. You've been doing logging missions in the first map, and I really don't like it at all. The water crossing crossings? Really? Do you know how to cross the water pretty well, or... The middle of the map is fine, just the flooded paved roads. You're you're taking the flooded paved roads, really? Honestly, I I hardly ever take these. It's pretty rough starting out. So like, what I would do is to cross this. <clears throat> honestly, I would never even. I guess this route's okay to take, but like crossing. Usually, I come down through here. Come along this, uh, what's this? This is a metal storehouse. And then I literally just jump right through. And then just come down through here. Um, you can jump up through here. There's actually a path that leads up across this river. This is kind of th thick right here. It's deep. But I mean, you can even come southbound farther and farther. And then I think this is actually kind of deep. So you can just kind of trend or come this way. This is actually deep, deep mud too as well. But... The way I really do think is the best is just going this way and then going through. I mean, there's only really one spot that you have trouble with on this whole crossing is just like right here, which just requires the winch unless, uh, unless you have a, a beastie truck. So other than that, you can probably even come up here, jump down through here and cross, cross, run down through this swamp right here, connect to this path. This is not strong at all and then yeah you have this this current here which kind of stinks and this stinks here yeah so yeah yeah those the flooded the flooded roads do kind of they're mad i do get it the rock slides oh yeah the rock slides oh my yeah that's true the forester will help sorry i just bumped my microphone <clears throat> the Forester helps a lot. Uh, diving for treasure. So I'm going to go. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. So like, look, I'm punched. I'm punched on high gear. You can see anytime I'm, I'm hitting some type of resistance or going uphill, the truck is using its available power to hit that target speed. When it doesn't need to hit that target speed as much, you can see the the consumption is actually lower. And then also just kicking off all-wheel drive when you don't need it is also a good thing. You managed just find the spots Nate was mentioning? Okay, that's good. No, the, the thing is you won't kill the engine in the water. The water's not deep. That's what I'm saying. The water's not deep. I mean, I can, I can show you a quick run. <clears throat> I'll show you a quick run here. I'll show you literally how I get across really quick. <clears throat> what truck are you using to get across that? Promise you're not going to kill it. The water is really not deep. If this ever loads, man. What am I on? PS4? Alright, let's go like this. Oh, uh, no. Okay. All right, so what truck is, is you think is going to have trouble? Let's okay. I'll just go show you something very mediocre.
All right, so. Mm, so we'll just go this way. It's the forester you're afraid of drowning? I don't think the forester will drown. I'll show you. I'll kind of show you why. This this will give you a good illustration now, or good good show. This is step. Okay. Probably shouldn't have used this cradle, but it's fine. I'm gonna get caught up here. Maybe not. Oh, nice. I didn't. So, I take you're going from like this logging camp right here, probably up, right? Um, from here, you legitimately could go back to this road or could go, yeah, I could go back to this road, maybe have to go this way through here. And then what I would do is I'd actually come up right up through here. And then if you have to get up to this logging station, but if you're coming from this southbound area, I'm just going to show you here. This is a good crossing. I, I would take all the time to get, get down south is just this way right here. It's pretty it's pretty easy. I mean all this water is fast flowing this way, so like if you ever get in trouble, just go toward the current. You can see it's really it's really shallow. It's pretty shallow. See, it's like barely hitting and it's actually telling me to turn off diff lock. So you can, you can see like it's just a floodplain. It's not really like crazy underwater. It's legitimately just a flood floodplain. <clears throat> yeah, so then just lead you right here and then like there's the, the southern half of the uh, of the map and then I just crossed right here. Boom, we're crossed. So at this point you see that little Here's this little path right here. This goes to that logging station. I could actually continue and go this way around here. This gets a little bit muddy down here, but it's not that bad. And then go this way through here. But this is this definitely is thick through here. This is probably the hardest part of this, but there actually there might be even a shortcut you could take up here. But yeah, that's basically it. And then, yeah, if you were going to head southbound from like up here somewhere, and like you're descending down. Well, I descend through these trees to be honest, but even if I went like northbound from the, the garage to here and then I wanted to cross, same thing, make this right hand turn, follow these islands, go with the current and then basically go right through here and then just basically jump onto this path and then you're over. So it's it's actually really, it's not really that, that daunting. It seems daunting because you see all this stuff right here, but no, you're not gonna drown. You won't drown. Hopefully that helped. You found this route, you never took another one. It's just a very easy, it's just a very easy route to take. It's very quick. I mean, like that was like what, maybe 60 seconds. We got to the next side of the island. But there's that one part I mentioned that's going to be hard. That one part is going to be very thick. Um, it's actually going to be how do I say this? That one, I probably would worry about drowning if you don't have a snorkel. But I mean, there's there's definitely, you can just go, if, if you don't want to avoid that part, you can just go the other way, get yourself spit out onto the road and you'll be fine. So know your machinery and then, yeah, good to go. All right, let's let's continue this. 
with one, one of my favorite trucks here. One of me faves. Can we get a short log trailer? Yeah, I know, right? There's been a lot of people that have been, uh, have been saying that. Okay, cool. Good job. Okay, so now back to grab this uh, white western star. And then I'll take this to the southbound. <clears throat> take the southbound, drop it off, pick up the scout trailer, pick up the load star, and then take those to their respective places. Yep. Yep, exactly. Back in the day, man, there were no... Man, back in the day where there was only medium logs, anybody remember that? <clears throat> where there were no short logs yet until I think a more was short logs, I think. Was it a more that was short logs? Maybe not. I think it might have been in Wisconsin. It could have been in Wisconsin, but <clears throat> yeah, we didn't have any type of frame, so your medium logs were legitimately... Um, that trailer shoot you know i should have done i should have went and got that trailer and then drug both of these down but it's fine we'll take this there yeah towering issues Service trailer. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about this right now. Can I get a directional winch? Thank you. <clears throat> nice. It has a... It has an engine. Butterflies are like out too. Oh, nice. I got caught at one. You know what? Hold up. First time catching up with the live stream? Nice, man. What's up? What's up, warning? I'm doing well, man. How are you doing? <clears throat> Good to see ya. Alright, Itima. We will see you later. Yo, Kutsuzov. Welcome in. Kutuzov, sorry. Good, man. Glad to hear it. 
Arrakis, thank you for that follow as well. Welcome in. <clears throat> Yep, we're just knocking out some tasks now in the flatland, or trying to. Dude, that'd be sweet if we got a free 49X. Nah, these are uh, the O, the OHD ones, the OGs, the OG OHD ones. Oh, those rocks, killing me, Smalls. Oh yeah, because I have the jet rims on them. That's why. <clears throat> yeah, I put the black jet rims on them. Honestly, man, the jet pack kind of has just confused a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. I do like the rims, though. The jet rims are legit. The all black just looks so good. Actually, I kind of, yeah. Yeah, the black rims do look good. Rocks give you more grief than stumps do? They're tough, man. What is the worst place for rock formations in SnowRunner that you guys have experienced? Yeah, I think that looks way better than the regulars, yeah, for sure. Ah, go this way. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm about to put my cough drop in. I probably could cut up through here not go in this mud pit, but it's fine. The rocks in Yukon? Ooh, yeah. Especially, like, going up to the gold mine, right? Is that kind of what you're, you mean? Rocks, man. Yeah, Yukon definitely has a lot of them. <clears throat> they definitely do. Yo, Kevin, welcome in. Yo, Decipher, welcome in as well. What's up, man? Welcome in. I know, right? They would never give it uh, give it to us for free because it's a it's a DLC vehicle. Yeah, that'd be cool though. That would be pretty sweet. <clears throat> a nice free. Nice free um, Western Star. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'll take it too. Alright, I'm gonna steal some fuel from him. Before we, uh, we dive in here. Oh, nice. He's like full. Nice, dude. Okay, that's cool. Now... This goes to another mission that's up north. I'm also going to siphon fuel from this at some point. Where are my friends at? Oh, we don't have any friends. <laughs> Normally, just all solo. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so now. <clears throat> no, I'm just joking. I normally just play solo, though. Uh, okay, so this, I think refueling goes there. <clears throat> the American crane is my only friend. Yeah, basically. It's dinner is served. Okay, that, that I'm not doing yet. We're going to go do empty garage. Yeah. All right, so over this way, boom, put the load start in the back. Yeah, and then get it back to the garage. <clears throat> is the 49X any good? Yes, it is. What's up, Texas? Welcome in. Yeah, every trip has to be kind of calculated, yeah. Or every trip kind of, I don't know. I think to be efficient, you have to try to think about calculating, doing multiple things in one trip, but I mean, at some point, you have enough money that it doesn't really matter. Isn't solos really hard eventually? Honestly, I don't think so. I don't really think so. I mean, I've played I played it so much that it doesn't really... I don't think the game is that, really that hard. But yeah, I mean, playing, playing co-op is fun. Don't get me wrong, playing co-op is fun. Yeah, the whole game can be done solo, except for Season 7. Season 7, you actually have to have co-op to 100% to it. <clears throat> yeah, I would rather play with friends, but I mean, none of my real life friends actually played this game, so. Yeah, and co-op is just not in a good area right now. Yeah. <clears throat> Why don't I ever play with viewers? Usually because I'm always working on something. What's up, Raptor? Welcome in. <clears throat> yeah, usually I'm always working on like a, a solo mode, stuff like that. Almost finished with the main. With oh wait, you mean main the region? Region? You never heard something good about season seven? Yeah, it's it's not that good. What's up, Navin? Welcome in. <clears throat> I wonder. Oh, there's that trailer. I think that's the scout. To be honest, I think that's a scout. Hook up. Yeah. I think it is. No, Maine's good. Maine's a good region, man. <clears throat> I like Maine a lot, actually. Good, uh, good balance of difficulty, fun. You finished Cola? Nice. Almost done with Yukon? Nice, dude. Oh, the guides. Yeah, you're welcome, man. I'm glad. I'm glad you've uh, you've utilized the guides. Yeah, the Forester and the Tega in Maine are. Yeah, they are pretty pretty beastly trucks. No, you mean skipping Tennessee? I don't know. If you want to skip it, you can skip it. Um, it's only one map. It's really not that long. I think it's a, it's a good looking map. It's just uh. It's just different. It just plays different, man. You'll see. 
I mean, if you play it, you'll see. But if you don't want to play it, you can. Wa I have a, a full zero to one hundred playthrough on YouTube for hard mode, and it kind of shows everything. Okay, so you get out of here. And then you, dude, what are you doing? Oh, I can, I can already see this being an issue. I can already see this being an issue. Tippy truck trying to pick up a heavy scout. Yeah. not looking good. Nope. Okay. I got an idea. I need to... Yeah. I'm gonna flip around. So I can actually grab him without... Well, actually, no. I got it. I'll grab him from, like, behind. You're actually watching all my hard mode streams? Nice, man. go. Not bad. Okay. No. Boom, there we go. Good stuff. Pack. Grab this. And off we go. Yo, Wombat, welcome in. Uh, find a way to get through the trees. And then we'll just head northbound. <clears throat> thank you, thank you. Yeah, you can. Some of them are too big, though. Some of them are too big. Like, you can't get the yar. The yar will not go. It's just too wide. But for some reason, you can get this one. I don't know. For some reason, you can. Okay, let's see here. This needs to go to the parking lot. So we'll, we'll rock this out. And then after that, I'll take this scout fuel trailer, do a little siphoning. Deliver it. Boom. Normally, I never use this type of setup. I'm always in a semi trailer, so. This is a very rare occurrence if anybody ever watches. <sighs> very rare. You know what? Yeah. Who needs roads? Yes, crane. <laughs> crane sideboard bed semi, yeah. Pretty much, man. It's a pretty sweet picture I could get, but I'm okay. 
Yeah, I just thought to myself, there's not a lot of missions like or tasks that would require my my semi trailer right now. So I was like, you know, what? I'll just do this. I'll just do this, you know. Honestly, semi trailer is such a such a good thing. It's such a great. I don't honestly, man. I forget. I played like 800 hours not using a semi trailer, and when I switched over and actually like learned how to use it correctly, it just changed my game. It just changed. It changed my. Uh, yeah, just changed the game, crazily. I converted you to. <laughs> I mean, there's downsides to it, right? There's down, there's there's downsides to anything. Uh, am I here yet? Yes, I am. Okay, cool. Yo, Ferdy, welcome in. Actually, hold up. Here we go. Yo, Ferdy, thank you so much for that prime sub. Three months, man. Thank you so much. For the, la for the first three maps, I was only a hitch trailer guy. It's after seeing your videos, I figured out what is the best setup. Yeah, I think, I think for... It's better than dragging a hitch trailer that gives you nothing. It really doesn't benefit you in any way. A hitch trailer doesn't. I'd rather the weight I'm carrying, I'd rather have it benefit me in some form. And be able to control, I guess, control it a little bit better. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I, it's effectively, you just have more control over your, your cargo and what you're carrying. You just picked up the game level 15 on your first playthrough. What makes a good semi-trailer good? So I actually have a review on the semi-trailer, but what you can do with a semi-trailer is you can... How do I say this? Um, semi-trailer actually directs all the weight going down to your wheels. So you want weight on wheels. It gives you balance. Uh, not balance. It gives you... It gives you grip because you're pushing the tires into the surface. So all of your weight is being pushed in. So, but when you use a hitch trailer, you're dragging some dead weight um, through elements. And if you don't have any significant amount of weight on your bed, you're actually hindering yourself. So you're carrying dead weight and the weight you're carrying behind you is just accumulating resistance from the, from the surface, right? So with a semi-trailer, you're directing all that weight being put down through your back wheels. And coupling that with all-wheel drive diff lock, it's just a very powerful asset. Also, semi-trailers, you have much better mobility. You have the also the ability to make your truck and your trailer... I'm going to leave this here, actually. You have the ability to make your truck and your trailer have an angle, so you can give yourself... How to say this? You can prevent tipping by just using angles. And I've done it multiple times. So like for instance, like this truck right here is considered a tippy truck, but with a trailer, with a semi-trailer attached to it, give me that fuel, give me that fuel. Let me see if it'll take it. Yes. All right, Um, with the semi-trailer attached to it, if I create angles with my truck and my trailer, I effectively add balance. So here's a good here's a good post actually. And this is this is a post. I'll show you this post from uh, someone who used to I think he used to be a Focus Home community manager. So one second, let me find this post, y'all. Uh, where's that? I think it's in my
No, I know where it's at. I have it saved. Let's go all bookmarks, focus home. Okay, so check this out. You hate trying to reverse hitch trailer? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why um, I'll use, I'm going to use the, the semi trailer here in a second, Wombat, and I'll just kind of show you this. So this was made prior to the game ever releasing. I believe, I believe Jellyfish was a community moderator, a community contributor. I, I forget what he was. Um, so he talks about, you know, the different textures or the different surfaces and stuff like that of, of the game. Now here's, here's something that this was already mentioned prior to the game releasing. Okay. I'm going to show you here. Here it is right here. These are, these are highway tires. Okay. No load equals stuck bad traction because you have no weight pressing you into the surface loaded. Good sinks deeper. So when you have weight on your wheels, you're actually effectively increase, increasing your traction. I've showed this in my randomizer playthrough as well, even with not having all wheel drive and just having diff lock with weight on wheels, how effective you can go through mud. This right here, there's no pressure. So very bad traction loaded trailer, which is just accumulating resistance. Bad. Yeah. Very bad traction. So kind of explained a little bit there, but for me, yeah. But yeah, you can go to my YouTube page. I actually have a trailer review that you can check out as well if you want to look at that information. But we're going to get back to using our semi trailer here in a second. I just have to deliver this last little bit. I think it's called refueling. Yeah, to this trailer park. You're welcome, absolutely. Honestly, this, uh, you wish Saber would give more trucks OHDs? Oh, if they did, it'd be crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I could probably throw highways on this thing and we'd be fine. I think we had highways on, what was it? British Columbia for one of the final missions. I think it was with the Subathon, right? Five slot trailer and it did pretty good. It's just, uh, you know, weight on wheels. Weight on wheels and, and diff lock and all-wheel drive in combination. Just a very effective thing. But yeah, if you want to see, like, how I took that to, like, another level on my YouTube channel, you can go check out my randomizer playthrough. And it kind of highlights um, just the ability or just the, the technique of using weight on wheels and just diff lock. Okay, so I, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to steal some fuel. Paste our exploration unit. There we go. And let's take it in. They made easier ma later maps easier. Yes. So the year three maps are easier. However, they're, they're still, I think it's, I think it's all dependent on truck usage. What's up, Anox? Welcome in. Yeah, it's all dependent on truck usage, though. But I mean, like, map difficulty has been trending down since year two, though. Like, after after main, pretty much the map difficulty is, is kind of uh, diminished, I guess. But I mean, you can still use OG trucks in later maps, like harder maps. How effective they are, I think that just all depends on the player's patience. To be honest, uh, did I go the wrong way? I did, you dummy. I did go the wrong way. I mean, I know people do like all all American truck challenges and stuff like that, and I think they do okay. You saw the Kodiak in real life today? That's crazy. That's awesome. I think I saw, I think it was a GMC or Chevy Bison. I think, I forget if it's GMC or Chevy. There's one, I forget, down the road.
Yeah, deep mud and etc. Yeah, yeah. But like my my philosophy is one in doubt, just activate all activate diff lock. No shame in downshifting and just activating diff lock. I think something I do is I watch a lot of people play and they'll go into like a mud pit and they'll be wondering why they're struggling. Oh, what am I doing? And uh, they just gotta activate diff. Diff is so powerful, it's unreal. Okay, cool, that's done. All right. What else do I have here? Dinner is served, the curtain side to the retreat. Okay, I think the retreat is, yikes, okay. Okay, now the curtain side's there. That's a scout trailer? Okay, never mind. The generator, I'm up by the generator. I probably can just deliver this. I probably can do this too, actually, with this truck. Maybe, hmm. Always on diff lock with toggle all wheel drive is so good. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the DLC, yeah, yeah. It is surprisingly capable with all wheel with rear wheel drive, yeah. If you have diff lock for sure. Or even just wait on wheels. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Um Okay, so I guess I'm gonna extend my use of this truck for a little bit, guys. I got some things I can get done here. Yeah, where's that trailer at? It's like in here somewhere. There it is, right there. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this for a little bit. I'm gonna use this for a little bit. And then uh, I'll switch back over to my Western Star. Just small tasks, man. They're small tasks. There's no reason for me to haul around there. The big trailer right now. Oh, come on. Yeah, I mean, like um, a good map that you're talking about is like a more, right? That's why I say like, <laughs> if you're playing a more, like gloves off. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> gloves off. That's the thing. Like a more is. How do I say this? I think. I do, I am a believer that you can play, the base maps season one, two, three, and then go to a more and still and still really thrive. However, like, I don't fault anyone for, like, skipping ahead and grabbing, like, I don't know, a Kenworth, Dairy Special, a Femme. Because, like, a more, dude, it's, it's crazy. Wow, dude, I'm, I'm getting, like, blown up. I mean, honestly, I used a lot of Russian trucks in a more. I think on Cherno Kamensk, I, you know, I used a 681 some. I forget what I broke out there. It's been a while since that, since I've looked at that playthrough. But I mean, like I, I did use some some lesser trucks when I could. Okay, what is this? Is it called dinner served? No. No, it's called I think towering issues. Yeah. Oh, nice! It's a service trailer. This is good. This is great. I'm pretty sure I can hook up with this. My only thing is I don't really recollect if this thing can hook up to a trailer. I think it can. Pretty sure it can. Nice. Okay, repair. Oh, this is so clutch, dude. The Forester is nice to skip ahead to get, yeah. 
I definitely, I never, I never done it like that, but I can definitely understand doing it. <laughs> Logging without the Forester, I'm going to say it's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting to say the least. I'm going to repair this truck too, actually. There we go. I did not see that news, no. That's not good news, though. I don't like how this trailer is kind of like colliding. <clears throat> Wait, what is... Dinner is served. What is dinner served? Hmm. Curtain sides. No. Uh, wow, that's all the way over there. Wait, what is... What about the scout? Did, was I supposed to find this? Is that a free scout? Wait a second. Is that a free scout? Hold on a second here. Did I not discover that? When I went over it? No, it's cliffhanger. We might actually do cliffhanger then. Okay. Yeah, maybe when we go up here, we'll go get cliffhanger. And then take him to the island house. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Use the P16 and the P512 for logging before the Forester came in. Wow. Crazy man, when logs came into the game, it definitely added a, a nice element of difficulty. But there's a lot of there's a lot of cash, a lot of experience in, in logging. Lots. Oh, the way I used to carry logs, yeah. Yep, that's that's how I did it in Yukon. Put them in a semi-trailer and take them to the location and then basically just pick them out and pack them in. It definitely takes uh, some patience. Take some patience and take some good driving because like, oh man, when you have a full semi-trailer packed in with what is it like? I think like it's two, four, four sets of medium logs, two sets of long logs, like all in conjunction in one semi. As soon as you tip that thing over or logs jump out, it's like, it's a nightmare. If it wasn't for me, you'd be still in Yukon logging. Appreciate that, man. I'm glad, uh, glad I could, you could find it useful. That information. I might actually reconfigure this truck, actually. That's right, one trip, one trip carefully. Let's see here. Yeah, back and forth is not my, not my thing either. It's not my thing either. Probably should have got gas there, but it's okay. What's up, snack pack? Yeah, six loads of medium logs, yeah. I know that one on Tamir for sure. He said expeditions things are getting moved over to snow runner. Like tire pressure and the push feature. Dude, not tire pressure, no. 
Do you, okay, so like here's the thing about tire pressure is that literally breaks the game. That literally breaks the game. If you give a, a highway tire the ability to lose pressure and, t and take on like a, what is it, like 3.5, a multiplier 3.5 traction, that's not a good thing. You, then you basically just make anybody starting out in Michigan, just it just becomes easy mode. Like it's even more easy mode than them adding the Mastodon. <laughs> Ah, so stupid. That is so dumb. I I talked to Vic. I, I need to mention I need to talk to him again. They do not need to do that, man. Is only for rocks and expeditions? Wait, but I'm per I thought I was for mud as well. Wait, is it? Wait, let me go look at the expeditions chart. Ah, uh, where was it? It's here. Yeah, so like the off-road off-road multiplier. This is this is McKillum's. Off-road friction multiplier. Mud friction. These are multipliers. So 1.4. Like the off-road friction going to 3.53. Yeah, I don't think this is a good thing. So the rock friction, unless he has, unless he has other numbers that have changed this. Yeah, I don't think there should be... They need to take off this this multipliers and just make it rock for for snowrunner. I I don't think that's a good thing. Rocks and expeditions equals asphalt and SR. That is true, but I mean then you'd have to Then again you'd still take more damage, right? From going faster. You should talk to him about co-op. I don't think they can even fix co-op. Highway tire have a student have a purpose. It already has a purpose. The highway tires, they're not that bad. They're really not that bad. Weight on wheels, all wheel drive diff lock, they're actually pretty decent. The push pull winch thing, I think that's a good idea. I think highway tires don't need to be touched, honestly. He said he told us in one of the pre-release expedition videos that they were to bring that stuff in. Oh, I hope they, I really hope it's not. Because you essentially make, honestly, at that point, so the thing is, and like tire options don't even matter, to be quite honest. Like, the difference between like, like an OHD one versus, I don't know, let's say like an OH, like a JAT OHD. The performance is like so minimal now and even it's going to kind of just diminish. So it's essentially now when they do that, it's almost like just use whatever you think looks good. Isn't this people misinterpreting again? Wait, is it me? They said that they bring across technical improvements, but didn't specify that. Okay, so Snack Pack was saying that he was talking to Vic, which is one of the SnowRunner developers. He said that they're bringing that over. That's all I'm. That's I'm just repeating what I heard. I hope it doesn't, man. I really hope. I mean, like, can you guys both agree that adding a multi, like a friction multiplier for for highway tires, is kind of not a good thing? I just I don't think that's that's something good. Okay, cool. That's done. You do trust Vic, though? I do, too. It just... 
Dave, do you want to mess- message him and get the get the lowdown on it? I'd like to know. I really would like to know. I, I really hope it's not. I'm I'm for the push pull winch. I'm even for like adding like side racks and stuff like that. Uh, honestly, like the tire buff pressure for scouts is awesome. Okay, I agree with that. W. I just think like. Then again, it's going back to the the natural progression of the game. So if you essentially like, then I can just run around with any truck in any situation with highway tires and just depressurize, and I have you know effectively mud tires without having mud tires, right? To be fair, they couldn't port it across directly. Tire pressure and expeditions interacts with the terrain layers that that don't exist in SR. Okay, that gives me. <laughs> That gives me hope. I think they could easily do the push-pull winch thing because it's already something that's implemented with the crane though, right? I mean, if you want him to join, yeah, you can join and talk. I'm, I'm, I'd be down to hear what he has to say. Lots of legends that I always see in the VODs. Yeah, Naked Dave's a legend, that's for sure. Naked Dave is like <laughs> the crutch I lean upon <laughs> in, a, in an adjusted way. I mean, if they did it in an adjusted way, but it didn't, they got to understand balancing though. I'm sure that's already on their mind. I hope it is. Oh, destructible shrubs, more water types. Okay. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I think the only thing with the 57X blazing through everything with tire pressure, it would be you take damage relative to speed, or it's easier to take damage with increased speeds. However, in expeditions, you could use the half tire pressure, still use the high range gearbox and not take damage. So you can kind of get a, yeah, so in, in a sense you can kind of do that. I don't know what the speed threshold is for taking damage, but trucks move faster in SnowRunner with respective gearboxes in my, in my small experience. Like the high range gearbox on the, uh, the step was pretty slow. I mean, I'm gonna run, run out of fuel. I need to like get this truck and get out of here. Maybe technical improvements or just the engine. I don't know. Yeah, I think the push pull winch. The push pull winch is is gonna be a good option. I like that. I've always I've always thought that should. I think with the tire pressure, I know on my on my review I said that's something that people think that should be like transported over. Um I think after thinking about that a little bit, I immediately thought this wouldn't be a good idea because I immediately thought about highway tires. Like I want the game to be fun, but I also I feel as though there gotta be some type of progression. You gotta have it. <clears throat> Although maybe we're being negative about the pressure stuff, a mild version of it helps with super conditions. Yeah. No, it isn't the worst thing in the world. Yeah. In super conditions. Yeah. That's right. I'm going to switch it off. Yeah. I'm going to switch off all wheel drive for sure. What's that winch you're talking about? It's called a push-pull winch. Basically, it allows you to let your winch out and let your winch in. So on SnowRunner, you can only, anytime you winch to something, you can't let your winch, you can't let allow slack in your winch. So if they allow that to come in, I could hook up to a tree on SnowRunner and then kind of repel down cliffs. So... That's what I'm kind of saying. Okay, let's uh let's do this.
what am I doing here? <laughs> it's this cliffhanger to the island house. What else can I do here? <clears throat> Drilling spare parts. The generator. Yo, Burb, welcome in. <clears throat> okay, uh, I need to do the essentials at some point, and I probably, yikes, dude. I probably should do the essentials, to be honest. Okay, I have an idea. <clears throat> I have an idea. Is this, can I get down through here? I might be able to actually get down through here. I'm gonna head back to the garage. I'm gonna swap this out. I think the push-pull winch would be a good thing. Because if you think about it, we already have the push-pull winch in SnowRunner. It's just in the form of a crane. So when you crane something, you can like let, like when you're holding something in the air suspended, you can let your crane lower it to the ground or you can winch it up, right? It's the same thing with like a winch from a vehicle. Do I actually speak to a lot of the devs? No, no. The only one I speak to is, is Vic. And just for a little, just for very small stints, it's, I don't really, uh, really bug Vic at all. But I talked to like Naked Dave, I talked to W. They're, those guys are, they're not devs, but. Yeah, you can hook to a tree and then like, it's good for, yeah, it's just good for climbing and stuff. Like for spider manning and stuff like that, I would never have to hook up to a different tree, if that makes sense. Oh man, this is gonna be rough. Oh my goodness. Yep, I see it right now, I already see it. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Once again, crane. Crane coming through. But yeah, Dave, hit him up, man. I, I like to know some deets, some details. I'm interested. That is why the crane is such a useful thing. Yeah, it makes your truck, I think, a little bit more tippy. What just happened? Wow, dude, what was that? That hasn't happened to me in so long. Wow, that's weird. Whatever. <clears throat> okay, so I'm thinking about doing something here. I might go get my Western Star and try to do something, but then again, I think I need to do another mission that requires me to use a low saddle. So I kind of should do that. Oh yeah, when you update graphics card, I don't know if I did lately. Okay, so let's see if I can string something together here. So dinner is served, curtain side, Curtain size down here. I'm actually going down to get the essentials. I'm going down to deliver cliffhanger at some point. Okay, I'm getting the essentials. I'm doing short circuit. Wait, wait, what is this? Oh wait, diving for treasure. So I'll take, bring the scout down, grab this trailer, 
grab these. I probably should grab this trailer somewhat too, and then bring it bring it up there. What else? What else I gotta do here? What else can I do? To the transformer yard. Okay, I probably should bring this too. So let's do this. I'll grab grab this trailer, bring it with me. Winch this truck. Okay, I got it. We're good. Yep, I got it. I'll be back for that scout. Thank you for that damage. AMD just had a patch to, to patch the micro stuttering. Yikes. So what is this I heard about like the 4090 the 4090 is like has like its connector is like melting under extreme load. Mm, did I go the right way? Yeah, I'm going the right way. Let's actually put this on here. <clears throat> Short circuit. There we go. <clears throat> yes, but only if you don't saddle up right to the GPU. Oh. Dude, that's scary, man. Think about buying a 4090. Yikes, that's old news. Damage, I knew it. I knew it. Emotional damage. Jay's Two Cents did a, did a really good video on it. Yeah, I want to watch that. I want to watch that video on that. I want to see what he says about it. That's like the dream, man. <clears throat> Having a 4090. Can you imagine? Going from my... Uh, <laughs> do I plan on buying a 40? I, I need to plan on buying a, a, a computer. <laughs> and, and get off this laptop, you know what I'm saying? It's not hard to overextend past the design bend. Oh. Is struggling with the display really? Your 3070 is? Really? Hold up a second. Is there anything else down over I, I could bring down here? Okay, that goes there. <clears throat> that goes there. Cliffhanger. Yeah, yeah, okay, gotcha. Okay, cool, we're good. Good, 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 let's go. I'm on a laptop, yes. I've been on a laptop ever since I started creating content for this game. So yeah, for the duration. Yep, it's because I, I used to travel for work a lot, pretty much like 315 days of the year. And then prior to that, I was in the Air Force traveling 150 days of the year. Yep. Basically like hooking up a, a 10, an AC unit with 10 amps. Yikes, dude. You're impressed, really? The mic is dope. Vocal clarity, honestly, man, I don't use any filters. I'm literally using a, uh, a Blue Yeti. No filters, man. I used to use filters and stuff like that, and I think it kind of degraded. It kind of like degraded the quality I wanted, but like this is legitimately like my, my natural voice. Like there's no, nothing has changed. 
Man, I do. I do want one. I mean, I would probably stream with like a camera and stuff like that if I got a, a better computer and a camera. Like a better camera. Probably. We got the 7900 X XTX. Wow, caught on fire. What? That's wild. Trumpet has one too. Nice. Yeah, I think, but for content creation, like you, I think about, I'm, I'm going to be streaming gaming on single PC. I want to play at higher settings. I also want to make videos and have good render speeds, all that stuff. I mean, honestly, this, this laptop does a pretty good job right now, but I, I would just want to do it better. Okay. I definitely will uh, send you send you some uh, some questions, Raptor. Absolutely, man. I I really appreciate that. I feel like I talk about this every day about wanting a new computer. <laughs> Someday, but not today. Hey, I'm thankful for what I got. Do you know what I'm saying? I I definitely am. I am I am definitely thankful for what I have. Okay, generator to the yard. I'm bringing this down. He's going to get packed on my trailer. I'm going to take those uh, drilling spare parts as well. Grab the other trailer down there. I think it's a scout trailer. Take it to its location. Yep, someday, just not today. So here's a little case in point about not having weight on your wheels and then trying to pull something heavy through it. Yikes. You're gaming on a 5K monitor. Wow, dude. That's wild. Honestly, man, I don't really care about gaming. I'm okay on 2K. Like, I'm okay on, like, 2560 by 1440p. Like, give me that in, like, 144 frames or 165 frames, which is what I currently have. If I can hit, like, 120 frames, I'm totally okay. <laughs> totally okay. You're happy with your little 1660? Hasn't caught fire? Hey, if it works, use it, right? Come on, get back to your wheels. Yeah, it's a waste on Twitch, yeah. There's no... There's no reason, honestly. <clears throat> I literally have 2K. I'm, I'm gaming right now. I'm in... Yeah, I'm in 2560 by 1440. I'm pulling 60, 60 frames locked right now. And I'm streaming. So, I mean... It's doing okay. It's not doing bad. For a laptop, it's not doing bad. And it's not overheating, so... It rarely gets over like 70 degrees. Uh, my laptop I'm using is actually in. If you go to my, I think the about tab on Twitch, it should be underneath the video. I actually list my specs. I do have it slightly underclocked, basically. Slightly, just so it doesn't like peak. But it works pretty well. The thread ripper rippers for work. <clears throat> those are I heard those are sick. Wow dude, that's that's really low. 
Only 5% load on video games? Wow. There's that big old trailer. <clears throat> I'm talking to your specialty now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to drop him like here ish. Yeah. Take this, deliver this, go back and get that semi trailer and that mission called Essentials. Pick back up that scout. Go grab this cargo over here. Yeah, we're moving, man. We're moving along. Moving along. Let's take some, take some fuel here. What? I always do that. Okay, whatever. Yeah, that trailer's huge. We actually pulled that with highway tires. Um, with the bore on highway tires on our, our normal playthrough. Pretty fun. It was tough, but it was pretty fun. Actually, it wasn't that tough, to be honest. It was just, uh, we found the the cement and the, the mud meet, meet each other at a weird, re really weird point. Dude, what I'm banking on is I'm banking on Starforge making me a computer. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. They would never. That'd be sick, though. Somebody somebody who's good friends with, like, Asmongold, go tell him to, uh... Go tell him to, to help me out. Go talk to, like, S-Fan and, uh... Nasmin Gold. Tell him, uh, tell him to help it, help a small guy out. You know. There it is. There's that trailer. The essentials. Do the loading area. Where's the loading area? Oh, nice. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, a couple good friends of mine. <laughs> And just tell him, tell him like, hey man, go fund me. Ah, that's not really my style. It's not really my style. Whoa, dude. I don't like, I don't like asking people for anything, man. I'm, I'm good enough with, uh, with what I got, and I'm good enough with uh, the people that come in and to, to watch the, watch the stream, hang out. That's good enough for me. That's good enough for me. Okay, so this trailer is going to be used for moving some cargo before I deliver it. What's my take on the Kenny W990 or the 512? I think the W990 is kind of a better version of the 512. More power, more gas. Um, yeah. Bigger tire. Well, I, I don't think bigger tires. Very similar tire codes. It does have a dead axle. I would not use a dead axle anyways. Um, roof rack. So... Um, balance wise, I don't think it has better balance right now than the P512, if that makes sense. You want my RTX 30? Honestly, man, if I had a computer to even put it in, I would probably say, yeah, but I don't even have a computer to put it in. So, <laughs> gonna have to take a rain check. 232, yeah. Is it 228 or 232? I think it's 228, actually. 
I thought 232. You know what? Either I'm confusing the Mac defense. I think I'm either confusing the Mac defense or. Yeah, so Mac defense is 232. Kenworth is 228. Yeah. Yeah, 228,000 for the Prime. Prime C13. Yep. Honestly, man, there's so many trucks, it's confusing, <laughs> to be real. There's so many now. Can I, can I pack this? Oh, that's a good pack. Nice and far forward. Okay, let's go. Go grab this other stuff here. Whoa, dude. Okay, never mind. That's good. Really? You know what, on second thought, I don't think I'm gonna put that scout trailer on here. I probably would just have to do... What? Dude, whoa! What just happened? What? Okay, whatever. Dude, that's not cool. Do you get the international pay start anywhere for free? No, you don't. Why are you not pushing back? <clears throat> what NA truck would you want to use? What do you want to see in the future? Oh, I don't know. I would probably say upgrading the current ones we have. I'm thinking. I could put the scat on top of the load. Oh, that's a good, that's a good, uh, yeah, jelly beans. Let's do that. that. Sounds good. Do I recommend purchasing the paystar in hard mode? Probably not. Just because I did, just because I don't care about cash. Honestly, I don't really care, to be honest. <laughs> cash is not really my concern anymore. I think at the beginning, at a certain point, you just don't care, I guess. You made enough money that like you're not really gonna run out. The cost of fuel on a, any given map is runs you about, to my knowledge, 40 to 70,000, depending on the, the region, which is not much at all. So, yeah. So yeah, if you don't care about cash and you're okay with like refueling it, it's just because it's smaller fuel tank, it's a little bit more hungry. As long as you got money, why not? Yeah. But if you want to like, yeah, I mean, we just bought a Western star. Oh dude, just relax. I didn't even tell you to go all the way out there. I didn't even make that command. What are you doing? My, what are you doing? I'm commanding you to come in. I need to jackknife the trailer again. I guess that'll do. That'll do. I think that'll be okay. Uh, it was the 40, the 1430, the Western Star, uh, 47X 1430. I need to actually, I think I need to like mess with him again. 
Yeah, I think I need to mess with him again. Why is it why is it acting weird? But acting weird, dude. Yeah, just chill. It's so tippy. Uh, I guess I'll be alright. Let's just go. Onward. Um <clears throat> dinner is served. I need to grab this because that's for dinner is served. Goes to the retreats. Cliffhanger. Where's, where's this go? That goes there. That goes there. Yes, that goes there. Okay, cool. Yeah, the fourteen thirty has OHDs, forty-four inch OHDs. Yeah, you can pack you can pack trailers and and uh, stuff like that on top of cargo. I think like OG trucks need help. <clears throat> How do I say this? I don't know. I don't think they're upgrades. I think what they did in Maine is giving like OG trucks upgrades. I don't think that's a good move. You shouldn't have to wait six seasons to upgrade a Transtar for a an all what's called a uh, a race suspension. It should just be a level one lock. Like I don't know, level ten, the Transtar gets a race suspension. Just a bit wobbly, yeah. But that's just my opinion. Yeah, I don't know if this is a good idea with this being on top, to be quite honest. I think this is doing more harm than helping. I probably need to reposition him. He, it looks like he's about to fall. Which he probably will. Imagine if they started upgrading trucks after season 12. I mean, I think there some, has to be something to give some replayability. Deliver the scout to expeditions, please. Yeah. Okay, I go right. I got a feeling this is going to fall off. Yikes, dude. I can just feel this thing wobbling crazily. I don't like it. I don't know if I like this. I might have to switch this out. does make my trailer tippy. I can feel it. I can feel it. I think I'm going to probably put it back, actually. Or I got an idea. I got some sort of idea. A CT681 with the race suspension? Uh, I was thinking more along the lines of like Maybe giving like the Freightliner 114SD just a, a tad stronger of an engine. Um, I don't know, some things, just just some things, I guess. Not necessarily things that are gonna like make trucks, I don't know, crazy, but just something. Yeah, I'm probably going to actually, I might pull it along the back. I'm going to put the trailer on here for sure. Honestly, if you just, if you gave all the American trucks op options for OHDs, I think you effectively increase their strength, their off-roading strength. Okay, I gotta get over because this is... Yeah, I'm just gonna honestly I'm just gonna winch it. I might just pull it alongside the back. This I wanna get this trailer on on the truck.
Mm, it's like this. Yeah, get off. Yeah, just get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. Oh, he got to his wheels. Actually, I mean, let's try it. Let me see if I can try it. That is exactly what you said, yeah. I wonder if I can even pick this thing up, though. Okay, let's do this. I know, right? We're bullying this scout pretty bad. Uh, I'm gonna try to. Very carefully. Very carefully. I wonder, though, if it's going to take up four slots and not three, so. I wish I had a longer crane. I do wish I had a longer crane for this. Oh, come on. <sighs> okay, that's okay. I'll leave that there. Come over this way. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. I guess I need a little bit more. I wonder if the wheels are even going to fit, though. They're, that's my issue right now. Dude. No, 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 no. No. Okay. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to do this. I'll just pull him along. I'll put the scout on the back. You laugh so hard when they release the telehandler pack. The telehandler, oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm just gonna pull the trailer. I think the wheels are too wide. You can see how wide those are. I feel like they would not, they're not gonna sit. That just, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Okay, let's go, crane. I think it's just too wide. Maybe I thought his his wheel not his wheel base, but the wheel width was pack. Oh yikes. Shuts back up because I wanna get him back to his wheels. Oh dude. Get off me. Get off me, monkey. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Horrible trailer to tow. Yeah, I'm get, yeah I, I probably can agree with that.
Okay. Okay, um... First order of business is I need to deliver this to the retreat. Okay, so... Retreat first. Spare parts. Cliffhanger after that. And then the essentials go there. So basically this is all... All together. Four missions all together. So let's go. I think it's called dinner is served. Yeah. So we'll go like this. Uh, I wonder if I just go this way. I'm wondering here. Let's see. No, we'll go this way. There we go. Let's do it. All right, four missions, one, one load. Oh, this is going to be terrible. How was the other track? I, I don't know if I took took that track before. Actually, that's probably it's probably a better track to take. To be honest, let's do that because it's like leading there, and then I kind of just go that way after after the fact. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. I do think the other way is easier, probably. Oh. Just because more roads. Oh yeah, that stuff happens. That stuff happens a lot. <laughs> that is, that's, that's snow runner for you. Oh dude. Actually, I might, I might take my original route to be honest. Wow, dude, that gas, that consumption is insane right now. I think towing this trailer is just like dragging and dragging and dragging. That's funny. <laughs> A thousand points. <laughs> Um, it's a good, it's a good question. It's a good question. I can't answer it. <laughs> that is a good question. It does consume a good bit for, for not being very strong. Yeah, I think I'm going to take my other route. Yeah, I'm going to take the other route. 
I'm gonna go this way. This this part sucks, but that's fine. And then I'll just go up this path here. I do have a theory though. I have a theory about about this truck though. I do have a theory. The reason why I don't think it struggles as much with powers as it should, probably. You're all ears? I believe it's it's uh it's tires. It kind of sounds it's, it sounds very very weird, but if you go back and look at <clears throat> it's a valid theory. Yeah, I think I, I kind of explained this before. If you go back and look at the Mastodon when it first came out, its tires were 200 kilograms. Okay, and when I reviewed it, it had problems towing up a very very shallow grade with a very very heavy trailer and the heaviest vehicle in the game okay and trucks like the 605R were pulling it with pretty much relative ease and what happened was they upgraded when they upgraded the Mastodon they gave it like a better turning radius um, and they made its tires a little bit wider they also made its tires three times heavier making them super heavy tires at that point I tested the same pull and the truck that could not previously get up that hill, which was a very shallow grade, I'm talking very shallow, it's probably something like this. Um, it was in like third gear. And just having a good time. So, and then testing this truck here, which I think I still have the, the actual footage of this. Putting this against other trucks that have better power to weight, but don't have OHD tires, which are 200 kilograms, but other trucks have more power to weight, but, you know, 100 kilograms. This truck was out pulling them on the, uh, on the test map. We're talking like eight slots of cargo. I pulled an eight slaughter with, with metal beams up that slope. Um, I don't think the ANK could do that. Um, I forget what other truck actually couldn't do that. But it's, it's, uh, it's very interesting. And, yeah, I don't know. Bigger or heavier tires and just if cre increasing, like, effective w pulling weight or just pulling capacity, period. It makes sense because the, the heavier trucks in the game that don't have high power to weight, it gives them the ability to, to pull stuff, to pull heavier things and not just have power struggles, so I don't know if there's something there. It does have custom OHD tires. Well, it has customs, yeah, it's just called the, I think, like the Kenworth Customs. I believe they are 200 kilograms, but yeah. But those have, those have a, like a special tire code that has like friction values. I'm just talking about weight, just sheer tire weight. You wish the Dan could do semi crane? Oh, it would be amazing. That would be amazing. <clears throat> but yeah, that's my theory. Um, I haven't posted a video on it. I don't think I will. I think it's the last time I posted something. I don't, what am I caught on? I'm spinning, but I'm. Oh, it's that trailer. Um. Yeah, the last time I posted a video on, you know, decreasing decreasing your tire options to basically effective pulling weight, I think a lot of people just, it's either they got confused or something, I don't know. They, I think what, what folks do, I think they automatically think that someone is saying that <laughs> using a less, less slip grippy tire is a better option all the time whenever you come out with something like that. I don't think they understand it's a situational thing. How do I feel about the JAT MHS 4s versus the OHS? OHS 2? You had really solid performance with the MHS 4s? I would say just use them then. The, the, JAT, the JAT MHS tires are kind of like a go-between from like an OHS 2 to a full blown like MHS 2. So I think just use them. 
Okay, I do I Oh wow, it actually just did it. Nice. Dinner served. Cool. Alright, back down the hill we go. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh Yeah, we'll just use them, honestly. Here's the, the amazing thing about semi-trailers. Look at that maneuverability. The maneuverability is amazing. But yeah, I mean, like, just sheer performance. OHS 2s are pretty great, but then again, they are single narrow and the jet MHS tires are a little bit more wide. So you're kind of, it's kind of like a go-between because, you know, they're they're not as wide as like a, a traditional MHS-2. They're not as, I, w I don't want to say grippy. I want to say like their performance through certain pieces of mud are just not as good as the OHS-2. But I mean, it's a good, a good balanced tire. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, um, I think we'll go, I'll do the this right here first let's do that so we'll go up here i'll just go like this i probably need to stop and get gas i don't i don't have yeah i need to get gas we'll do that come up this route deliver those after that i think we'll come through here and then down and then over no you shouldn't be buying the most expensive tires so if you if you watch my tire reviews, so there's three of them to be honest. I'd watch them all. I've done three three videos on tires currently, so it's so if you go to my page, go down to other helpful snowrunner videos. This one probably should be the first one you watch, which is the mud running tips. It's my most popular video I've ever made. After that, I would probably watch the best tires in SnowRunner. And then after that, I would watch the Jat Tire uh, DLC review. After you watch those three, which is like pretty much almost an hour. Yeah, pretty much almost an hour of footage and talking. I think you'll have a, you'll, you'll have a pretty good understanding of, of what, what you can use that is going to be the best option for you. You always prefer balance over uh, over trailblazing? Yeah, I do too, kind of. I kind of like the go-between, but if the truck is super balanced, then I'll just go performance. It just all depends on the player. Would you say there's a best case, best use case for each? I use the mistake of most expensive and aggressive tire. I've learned, yeah, usually it's not, it's usually not that way. I think the best use case is basically it's kind of dependent on you, if that makes sense. If you're prone to tipping trucks over, I would go with the the widest tire that you, you can get, right? If you are not and you just want to get raw performance, I would probably go for the best performing tire. And if you are kind of like want the both, best of both worlds, I think the Jats, like the Jat MHS tires are they're kind of the best of both worlds. If all you have the option for is the single narrow or the single track tires. But if you have a chance for doubles, I'm always going to pick doubles. You're simple. I personally use OHS2 on Russians and OHD1s on Americans. Yeah. I mean that's that's a good that's a good pick too. So like basically Redneck is not concerned with his balance on, on Russian vehicles, which most Russian Russian vehicles have good balance, right? So he's he's pretty confident with that. So that's good. Um, but if you you know you're not confident in balance and just go for go for wide track. <clears throat> I found the biggest change when I sussed out the tire abbreviations. <clears throat> I 
So like off-road heavy single, mud heavy single, off-road heavy double, like the, the abbreviations of those. We've had issues getting stuck with the OHS2, but it's very possible. So, <clears throat> okay, so issues getting stuck with the OHS2. No, I can see that. I can see that. Here's here's why. It's because the OHS2, if you throw them into like super thick mud, they penetrate, right? OHS2s are meant to penetrate mud because they're, they're single narrow track, which which makes them very effective because they, they can penetrate and they have good friction values and they don't generate a lot of... Uh, a lot of friction because they're single track <clears throat> so they're, they're, they don't have to basically displace mud or move mud around to go through it right there's not a lot of uh resistance but the thing is if your truck fizz uh, your truck i guess what do i say this um if your truck collision model is not favorable and you're dragging underneath when you're trying to cut through that surface yeah you're you're not going to get anywhere so then, that's also a, another thing that, that's dependent. So like if I was in like a, <clears throat> let's say, an Azov 5319, oh, OHS2 all day. Because it's, its collision model is absolutely crazy favorable. But if I'm in like, I don't know, uh, something that doesn't really have... I would say the 64131 does have a pretty favorable collision model, but not as favorable as the 5319. But like if you wanted to not sink as much, yeah, then you use the JAT. But yeah, it, it boils down to just a personal play style. That's what the JAT is really for, actually. Or the JAT tires. They're, they're really just... It's more for personal, personal usage. Okay, let's go back because this is where the drop off is. Cool, that's that. Now we take, <clears throat> I want to jump down here so bad, dude, but I can't. So I guess we'll just, uh, I know I might be able to squeeze through these trees and then down to like here across. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go. You've been using custom tires? Yeah, custom tires are always pretty good to use. <clears throat> Man, I think I think we talk about tires. I think tire options are like the most talked about thing on this channel. I think it it might be the most talked about thing in the SnowRunner community, actually. Is just tire options. Okay, let's try to do this. I think I'm gonna try. Ooh. Wait, can I even get through? I think I have to like go down through here then over. Okay, I have to actually extend. Extend down then over, I think. I think they kind of, yeah, they probably could do a better job explaining it, but I think that's, I think, I don't think they intended on on things being complicated like that. I don't know, maybe who knows. What am I stuck on? I'm stuck on something. Oh, it's my trailer. But like in truth, like I don't know. I probably could use like any off-road tire like i could probably use an ohd three on or a two on this and, and be fine do you know what i'm saying like it's not going to break my experience it's not going to break my performance that bad 
like across oh I need to actually get an angle here hold on I need to, I need a serious angle or I'm gonna tip over here we go We'll be talking crop rotation and yield very soon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Na <laughs> Navin knows. Navin knows about that Manor Lord type. Navin knows. Yeah, I think there's... Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of min-maxing. That's kind of how, honestly, we all kind of do it. Well, maybe not all of us, but it just happens. It just naturally happens, man. Min maxing is just a thing. But honestly, yeah, I, I probably could use like a Jet OHD. And I think in the grand scheme of the game, it takes a thousand hours to complete. Like going from A to B and, and missing out on maybe three seconds here and there or five seconds here and there, it doesn't, it's not really that big of a deal. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I think like there's sometimes people make too much of a big deal about about things. <laughs> but yeah, I like balance, man. I do, I do, I probably would trend more toward if I know a truck is superiorly stable, I'll, I'll just go performance. And if the truck is not, I trend to, I try to like, how do I say this? Uh, I guess min max. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll try to min max in a sense. Yeah. What's up? What's up, Bulldozer? You're welcome in. If the truck is tippy. I'll try to, to mitigate that, which basically is what I do here with this, this truck here. Cause I could use the OHS, but the thing is using the OHS on this, I don't know. Yeah, you just kind of work around their flaws. Yeah, let's go like this. You missed this game so much. After you completed it, you got bored. Oh, there's the scout. I'm going to sell this thing. What's up, holes? Welcome in. I'm just gonna let this thing fly off. I don't really care. I'm gonna recover it and yeah. I got I got things to do. Take this. Take this. This is the last. Here's four missions right here. Four mission work. Yeah, I think every truck, like a truck has a strength, right? And you kind of want to play to its strength. But then again, it has weaknesses. So you kind of want to, you kind of want to like plug the holes, right? So like this one, it doesn't have a ton of power, right? But it's uh one second guys, I have a call coming in. Okay, I need to hurry up because I have actually a, a gentleman coming to my house for a, uh, I might have to go AFK here shortly. I have an appointment for someone to do pressure washing because I was going to do it myself to be honest, but I don't have a pressure washer. And then I was going to actually do 
what's it called? The the alternate method, but I don't want to mess with the chemicals and stuff like that and kill my grass. But I have like bad, like my, my black top. Well, my, it's not really black top. It's uh, just cement, but it's kind of like darkening a lot because like the front of my house faces north and it doesn't really get a lot of sun. So I don't think anyone has, has ever cleaned the the cement surface like since the house was built and it's just uh it needs it needs it bad <laughs> to say the least it needs it bad But yeah, this truck has, I think its strength is its tire options. It doesn't have a ton of engine power, doesn't have a ton of balance. It has uh, a lot of add-on capabilities, and I think that's basically, that's basically it. Pretty decent ground clearance, but you just try to work around it. Yeah, the truck fell off the trailer. Yeah, yeah. But I wanted it to. I, I, I didn't need it anymore. I'm just going to recover it and sell it, to be quite honest. So it doesn't really matter. Because it was a, re a reward. So... Well, this trailer was uh, was pretty helpful. We just knocked out all the tasks for Flatland. All of them. Crazy right now. I wonder if this gives me a free one. I think it's. I think it does. I think it does. Does it? Let's see. It does. Cool. Sounds good. Well, guys, anyways, that is going to be the extent of the stream today. I thank you guys for stopping in. I actually have to go because I have an, someone coming to do an estimate. So I kind of have my attention is needed in other areas and I don't know how long I'm going to be gone. So thank you all for stopping out. We literally have gotten. What is it? 39%. We were 25% yesterday. So we literally got a ton of percentage done. We're moving pretty quick through this region, I got to say. Um, anyways, we will, we will be back tomorrow. Same time, same place, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come stop by. We'll be hacking away at some contracts here on, uh, the Flatland. And then we're going to move over to the reactive zone. So hopefully we'll get maybe past 50%. So anyways, appreciate you guys. If I have any questions, I will definitely hit you up Raptor. Thank you, Otterman, for that follow as well. I will see you guys tomorrow until all, until then. God bless. Stay up, right? We'll see you.